What's up, guys? We are live. Second podcast of the day, bringing you some top-notch PWF Universe entertainment. So we got James Marshall joining us for a podcast slash live Q&A. This is a podcast that a lot of you guys have requested over time, so I'm glad we can make it happen. Uh, but yeah, thank you for coming on, James. It's a pleasure to be here, Alex. Thanks for having me. For sure. So for anyone who's not familiar with who you are, do you want to do a quick introduction? Sure. Uh, so I'm James Marshall, founder of The Natural Lifestyles. I've been coaching guys in natural style seduction, lifestyle design, sexuality, in a game since 2007. So I'm one of the dinosaurs of the PUA industry. I've uh, been here since the, since the very beginning. Uh, and I specialize in, let's say, holistic training. So I certainly teach pickup, but I teach guys a lot to do with mindsets, with uh, meditation, with self-confidence, with psychological understandings of men and women. And in recent years, I've moved more into high-end uh, sexuality coaching. So I run the world's most expensive, most uh, in-depth sex coaching course. And of course, still still running uh, seduction boot camps all around the world as well. So the natural lifestyles is you, Alex, and Leah McRae. Is there anyone else that's part of the team? Yeah, I mean, we have, yes, there is a Shay Matthews, Virag Tierra. They're, they're our primary main coaches. Uh, yeah, we've had lots of people in and out over the years, including people like Travel Bum and uh, various other coaches in and out. But yeah, that's the current coaching team. Okay. Yeah, I'll be honest. I'm not too familiar with your content, but I do remember watching a lot of Liam McRae back in the day. And uh, that dude is legit. I can definitely say that. I watched a good amount of his infield. Uh, it was like four or five years ago. Uh, but okay, so let's start off in the very beginning. So just quickly explain how you got to pick up and why. Well, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's a long story. I mean, before I was into pick up, I was a musician, martial artist and hardcore Buddhist. And I bounced in and out of China. I was studying at Shaolin Temple, studying Kung Fu and Buddhism at the time. Uh, and I came back to Australia and decided, like, I, my plan was essentially that I was going to move to China to, to become a monk. But before I did that, I wanted to Im bury myself in enough hedonism to try and get it out of my system, which failed abysmally as a strategy. Uh, so, you know, those early days, 2006, I found my way into the early lairs, like the early forums. I uh, wanted to, you know, see if anyone was, was any good. And when I went to those organizations, I found that, okay, that the guys weren't good i was uh, you know i had more skill than them and so i slipped straight away into kind of surrogate teacher role um and then m met my first business partner and within a year we were running our first workshops in melbourne i mean originally they were you know weekend workshops we were trying to get paid to get laid to make a bit of pocket money uh figuring out like we were good at pickup but we didn't really know how to teach at the time so the first year or so was really figuring out how to backwards engineer what naturals do and put it into some kind of co coherent system which is principle based as opposed to technique based uh then it was 2011 i got invited to speak at the 21 convention my speech went fairly viral and that's where we kind of that's where i hit the international scene and then started coaching all around the world after that cool i've also spoken at the 21 convention but we're uh half a decade apart uh were you always good with girls or was this something that you really struggled with when you were younger <laughs> No, I was a complete dork. I was I was a flute playing, opera singing nerd uh, growing up in the 80s in a really rough school in Australia. Uh, no, I was certainly not good with girls at all. So, like, I didn't learn, like, you know, some of the old school pickup artists, like, total nerd and then did and fastidiously focused in, and on this and then had this complete road to Damascus change. Like, my changes were slower and more incremental. So, like, I played music in bands for years. And so, as a result, I get to meet, I got to meet girls and got to, you know, have women attracted to me because I was in a band and figure out how that kind of thing worked. Um, all of my martial arts and meditation training in the early days was what set my foundation. Like, that's what gave me the confidence and the presence to be able to, to meet women. So, like, I was learning by pulling different threads of lifestyle design together and then uh yeah and then i started going really hard when i was like 26 27 that's when i started doing a lot of street approach and and you know getting good at cold approach let's say gotcha what age did you lose your virginity at if you don't mind me asking 16. Oh, okay so that's, that's pretty young yeah cause, well because i was I, I went i was an exchange student to america when i was 16 right so i was like a total dork in australia and they sent me to boise idaho of all places oh. and um which is like 50 percent mormon 25 percent nazarene and 25 percent baptist um so it took me a while but i did because i was australian i had an accent people thought i was cool so i did actually manage to get laid when i was 16 there uh yeah so no i mean you know I, i'm not i'm not the traditional story of like total whatever 
total virgin guy who in his late twenties figured it out. Like I was, I was on, I was on the path earlier on, let's say. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, so let, let's move on to this. So, um, I know, uh, my tech guy who's more familiar with your content, he told me that you kind of transition a lot. Tell me if this is true or not. Like you transition a lot of your content. So, uh, back in the day you were kind of talking about one thing and then later on you said, no, this is like, I don't want to teach this anymore. I want to focus on that. Does that sound about right? Mm, no. <laughs> Well, okay, I, so I don't, I, I don't really know what he's referring to. I mean, I've um, taught a little. Was there ever like a massive shift in your, um, in your whatever, in your content or in your in philosophy? Anymore. But I've certainly, um, it's certainly evolved and changed over time. Yeah. Okay. Was was it like a huge evolution between what you were doing when you started and what you're doing now, or was it like a very slow and progressive one? You mean in terms of teaching or in terms of pickup? In terms of yeah, in terms of teaching the content, the stuff that you believe. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, uh, initially we were, I was me and one guy teaching guys night game. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're mostly I teach day game, you know, I use microphones all the time. I don't think you can coach in field without microphones. Um, I developed a bunch of frameworks in terms of conversational frameworks, as opposed to lines. So I don't teach guys to go and say this thing, but I teach them various ways to navigate conversations, which are flexible and adaptable. Um, and then, you know, bringing in the inner game stuff, the meditation, mental reframing, this kind of thing is like I plugged in gradually over time. So, yeah, I'd say it's like much more holistic than it was. Initially, it was a young guy going out, getting laid, trying to get guys laid in clubs. Uh, and that's I don't do that anymore. I'm too old. Yeah, I, th I think I think that's what exactly he's referring to. So let's now yeah. kind of brings us very nicely to our next topic. So this, this is a kind of a tough question. So we can go in detail on it. Uh, but just give an overview of what, like, are the, at this point in time, uh, what are the big tenets of what you teach and what you believe when it comes to picking up girls? Well, primarily, I base my entire teaching system around five core principles. So uh -huh. each, each one of those principles blows out into many different directions, but they are awareness, intent, pressure release, emotional impact, and decisiveness. So essentially, everything plugs into that. So, I mean, I can talk you through briefly if you want. Yeah, let's, let's briefly go through each one of them and then I'll ask sure. some more follow-up questions. Sure. Well, the first one is presence and awareness. And without that, I don't think you can be good at this at all. Like if you're, if you're unable to be there with the woman being, looking her in the eyes, but actually being aware of your present time, felt sense, emotions, thoughts, and body, rather than thinking three steps ahead, planning what you're going to say. Uh, that's, you know, that's in my mind, that is the core of the natural is that he is actually spontaneous and he is actually, uh, able to respond to the needs of the moment as opposed to being prepared for the moment. So yeah, that's, that would be like where it begins and awareness creates a potential, a potential space, let's say a neutral space inside you and which is then needs to be charged with an intention, right? So just being, just being present and aware is kind of neutral, which is good, but it doesn't actually provide, uh, contain any masculinity. So the next, the next intent uh, the next principle is basically to project intention so that is okay. aligning your thoughts feelings and emotions with what it is that you're doing so you know if a guy's going and saying a direct line whatever it is doesn't matter what it is uh if he's just going and saying the words more often than not it doesn't feel like anything to the woman because it's it sounds like he's rattling it off it doesn't sound like he's actually right. there. whereas the man that is you know in his body that is present that has charged himself with it with a sexual masculine intent lets it out through his eyes and then says whatever direct line then it's going to hit then it's going to actually have some kind of impact uh then emotional impact which i mean basically kind of you could say that almost all things human related create emotional impact but we're looking here at like what is it that sparks emotion in a, in a woman because ultimately a woman decides to sleep with a man because it feels right right now, not because it seems right or because it th she thinks it's a right, the right idea. It's because, okay, in the moment that it actually feels like the right thing to do. So looking at different ways to influence her senses, whether uh, influence her emotions, whether that is through connection, through qualifying, through, through flirting, basically to elicit different types of emotions. Um, pressure release is essentially creating friction uh, in order to resolve friction. So, you know, any, all types of pressure has to reach some kind of resolution. So if I'm using a qualifying statement, a question on, on a girl that she has to think that creates a vacuum where she's sucked in, where she, she actually has to contribute, that's a pressure that is being released by her answer. So, you know, examples of that would be like most of the time guys release pressure on women too much, right? So they ask her anything, I don't know, what are you studying? She says, oh, I'm studying vet science. And they're like, wow, that's so incredible. Oh, I've, I've, you know, you must be really kind. You like animals. 
like there was no pressure because the woman didn't have to think and then he releases the pressure immediately and validates her when she didn't have to think as opposed to uh adding another qualifying question breaking rapport in some kind of way to create the tension that leads her to then invest more and then you can resolve and uh, validate her after that then it has actually has an emotional spike yeah. so you know exact same same example she's she's studying vet science and i said oh, okay did you did you choose that or your parents made you do that because you could get the grades for example yeah. you know then she then she's gonna have to justify herself it creates pressure the tension needs to be resolved she she gives me something okay then i validate her pressure release uh and then fifth principle decisive decisiveness being able to pull the trigger like being able to uh step out into the abyss and make your desires and needs known and met uh which is like one of the primary things that men struggle with, you know, being able to go up and say hi to ask for a number, to ask her out on a date, to pull her back to her home, to you know, tell her to lift her hand so you can take her top off, and all the all the steps that a man must make in order. I mean, unless... James, is that the same thing as confidence? No, because okay. I mean, conf I mean, confidence can be confidence is uh, is dependent on the action. I mean, I can be completely confident in drinking this cup but have no confidence with women i don't think they're necessarily transferable so i guess uh yeah so like when i think of decisiveness i think of like you know exactly what you want right like you're very decisive i know i'm gonna do this i know i want that i know i want to take the girl to that bar right uh but you can be very decisive and not be that confident right you could just be like one of those people who's just like very strong-headed when i think of confidence i mean like you believe in everything you're doing you go up to the girl and you say hey i want to take you home you believe in that you're not being haphazard right so like yeah so I guess like what you're describing to me sounds a little bit more like confidence. Maybe you could kind of like ex expand on that. Sorry, you just you cut out then. So what you say? Sounds what I'm like saying is the, descri the description you're giving for decisiveness to me personally sounds more like confidence, right? So I guess I'm just kind of curious, uh, like what what separates decisiveness? Like the way, you, like, I don't know. I, mean, I think you understand what I'm getting at. Yeah, sure. Like, I, um, I mean, confidence is a funny thing, right? Because it's like it, it only appears while you're doing the confident thing in a way. Right, like confidence is not a static state. It's not something that you have and then it stays there forever. Like you know, you get confident and you're confident forever and without. It's it's like the action of doing the thing creates creates some elements of confidence. Like because you know, guys are ask, always asking you, know, how do I get the confidence to go and approach girls? You don't. You can't get the confidence to go and approach girls. You go and approach girls and then you get the confidence. Okay, so let's let's go through through these one by one. I wrote these down. So uh, present. So. My question for that is this, right? So I think if you, in my opinion, if you're a guy who like, you know, has good skills with women, right? Presence is extremely crucial. I know for myself, for example, when I am more present in an interaction, uh, I typically do a lot better, all right? And typically for me, what's gonna make me present is uh, challenge level, right? So if it's a girl I'm not really attracted to, I'm not really interested, I'm typically not gonna be that present unless she's like making me laugh, like, you know, like crazy, which is very rare. But if it's a girl I'm really attracted to, right, that's gonna kind of pull me in the moment. It's gonna pull, put me into a flow state, right? But my question will be this, what if you're a guy that's learning game and all your instincts are wrong, like meaning like your natural instinct is just to like be her best friend and like, uh, like just babble on for three hours. Like, how do you balance that? Like, because I would say that for those guys, they need to have that little voice in the back of their mind. Like, okay, okay, I'm spending too long babbling. I need to move things forward, right? And I feel like without that voice, if they just focus on presence, uh, that could potentially, you know, make them not escalate. So I don't know, just hear what your thoughts on that are. Yeah. I mean, for, for a guy that's, let's say, a beginner or, or someone who's learning this, you have to oscillate between um, creation and analysis, essentially. Mm -hmm. So... When you know when you're when you're a pickup artist or like a guy who's good at this and you're in flow, you're typically not analyzing much. You're in create, you're in creativity, and you might and like for you or I, we might check in occasionally and go, "Oh, logistics. I should this bar's closing in ten minutes. I should probably move things." Right? Like so, you you're going into an an analysis briefly to solve some logistical problem, and then you go back into like being into into, into the present state. Um, so that's that's something to be aware of for guys. Is yeah, okay, we're not going to be sitting in Zen Buddhist like satori forever we need to be able to like be able to oscillate or switch gears a little bit to be aware of like okay i'm present with this person i'm, I'm there with them and then i'm aware that i also need to keep this thing moving uh -huh. so like but going back to what you were saying earlier like the way that you just uh like what the way you know that you're feeling present is okay when you're when you're with a girl that's particularly hot for a lot of guys that would be the opposite right the hotter she is the more they the more they'd actually zone out because right. they're going into fight flight and yeah. disassociate yeah, response. so in those states what i'm really helping guys to do is 
not to be reliant on the on the other or the external stimulus. Uh -huh. you, you you want to be basically generating this this present state endogenously. So what does that mean? It means being able to like the simplest thing I tell guys is like how to how to be present. Feel your feet and wriggle your toes. Right. So it's like mm -hmm. that's as a, as, a, as a most simple basic thing because the moment I start wriggling my toes, my focus goes down into my toes. I'm out of my head now. Now I'm into my body. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's yep. you know, like a, a simple hack. Um, but essentially what I'm looking at is like when I'm communicating with a woman, I'm actually really present of my mouth moving, my eyes, the resonance of my chest as, as the, you know, my voice is vibrating. I'm aware of my cock and balls. I'm aware of my breathing state. So I will tend to slow down and deepen my breath into like abdominal type of breathing, which is a very grounding and powerful breathing. Uh, and so that's, that's what I mean, like in terms of when I'm teaching guys presence, I'm really teaching them very street level functional meditation tools uh, mm. because most most men and most humans really most men are trying to think their way out of problems that can't be really be thought out of right like, right that they need to be felt out of let's say as opposed to thought out of and when you're in your head it doesn't really work so okay how do you get out of your head the simplest way is to be aware of somewhere in your body right you can't logic your way into pussy right like you can't you can't show up on a date and give the girl five reasons why you're attached right so that's i think something right. a lot of guys uh tend to miss so okay so perhaps I, I you can perhaps you can in germany i don't know but yeah in germany well is it, isn't that easy in germany because no because the germans are so logical didn't you know they're quite logical well i don't think i would yes. work in germany but okay so uh, I like I, yeah no, I was going to say, I hear what you're saying. So basically, you're talking about oscillating between uh, just being very present in the moment, right? Focusing on the situation. Uh, so for me, I, well, I think we're talking about two different ways to get this, to the same point. For me, the way that is, is through flow states. Are you familiar with the book, The Rise of Superman? No. Okay, you should definitely read that. I feel like it would be right up your alley. But it talks about like the scientific explanation for flow states, right? How flow states are something that are like actually, it's not like just in your head, something that's like can be reliably replicated. And basically... Uh, the uh, the criteria that he gives about getting to a flow state is the challenge level has to be just right. So, for example, uh, if the challenge level is too high, like you have no experience with girl, and I put you in a room with like two hot girls, you're going to go into fight or flight like you're describing. But if the challenge level is too low, you're not going to be interested. So what he says is the challenge level has to be like 10% higher than your ability. That's kind of the number, and that's when your brain kicks you into flow state. And when you're in a flow state, you're going to be very present. You're talking about getting to that kind of like flow state through more of like meditation type of practices, which I think is also another way of getting there. So I think that uh, we're talking about basically the same thing. We're just approaching it from two different angles. Uh, but okay, fair enough. I think presence is pretty self-explanatory. Would you say that the main way like you would teach guys to become more present is through uh, breathing and meditation exercises, or is there anything else more to it? There's a lot more to it. We can use any of our senses to, to like, basically, if you, if you, wherever you are right now, expand your uh, awareness out to your periphery, listen to all the sounds that you can here in the room and outside the room uh like basically you can use any of your senses to affect do dropping into presence right so we can we can we can use our sight we can use smell we can use uh touch uh so like you know walking down the street and actually touching the leaves of a tree as we go by and bringing my awareness to my fingertips listening to the sounds around me like especially when you take guys into a club and they're totally overwhelmed right you've seen that before where they go in there's just like they're just suddenly going to this overwhelm so with that, I, I, I say, okay, just focus just onto the onto the bass beat. Just for only listen to the bass beat. Don't don't look around all over the place because you're getting overstimulated. Keep your keep your keep your field of vision here and slowly scan and listen just to the bait to the bass beat. Right. That that will that alone will take the person from oh I'm I'm in the club. What does that all mean? I oh, fuck the girls looking at to like just listen to the fucking bass beat. Get into get into the vibe, right? Let's like this is what we're talking about when we we're trying to talk about getting into the correct state for an environment. Uh, obviously, some people, women do it naturally, some men do it naturally, and lots of lots of guys don't. They overthink it too much. So if we choose to redirect focus, like essentially, good meditation is conscious redirection of focus and being equanimous or objective about whatever it is you're experiencing. So then there are there are many ways that we can implement that. Okay, yeah, just to further add on that, I feel like there's additional benefits to being present aside from just being better with women, uh, which certainly will help you. I think uh, for me, it's mainly it's happiness, 
Uh, I'm just like the main reason nowadays why I pick up girls. It's like, yeah, pussy's a part of it, but I could just pay a prostitute. It's about like the, the, the flow state I'm going to get into. If I'm going after a girl that I find attractive, it's the challenge, the fact that I'm being the moment. And I find that generally when you're really present about something, you're, you're just happier because your anxiety goes away. Your depression goes away when you're really focused on something. Uh, but yeah, if you guys want to see more than that, just read the book, The Rise of Superman. It goes into extreme detail about how like one guy, for example, was able to uh, significantly allevi alleviate a bunch of his medical problems just through consistently getting into flow states uh apparently there's a whole chemical cascade that happens in your brain when you get to flow state but that's a topic for another day all right let's move on to the second one project intention i feel like that one is extremely straightforward uh what you're saying is basically just be purposeful right so like you're not going in there and you're like uh oh, do you want to be my friend do you want to pick up some coffee like you know what you want and you're not afraid of expressing that is that correct characterization when i'm talking about intention i'm, I'm talking about an internal feeling that i think feel and project it's a, and I'm sending a message out. So most of it's done through my eye contact, right? So as I was saying, the awareness creates the potential space. Then I need to generate something internal. The woman needs to look in my eyes and see that I'm hungry and that I mean it because otherwise anything I say is bullshit. How would you like, let's say, let's say I'm a beginner, right? I'm coming to you for coaching. How would you uh, help me uh, uh, like understand this or implement it? Sure. Walk down the street, lift your head up, held high and look every woman in one eye. Don't don't just pick one eye and zap her. Like, think of it like it's a laser beam. It's like, I want you. I want you. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a good way to start, because most men are doing the, exactly the opposite to that. They're actually filtering them, like censoring, the, censoring their, their own desire. They avert their gaze. And I'm not saying, you know, sit there and ogle women all, all the way down the street. It's like, OK, I'm walking down the street and I'll zap her with with a clarity of intention. And women light up when when they notice it, uh, because it's very rare for men to do. So that's the I mean that's the simplest first step to start projecting intention. Gotcha. Are you familiar with Alan Roger Curry? Yeah, I remember. So actually. I'm sure you know mode one approach. Is there a difference between what you're describing and what he talks about? Because he talks about being very very direct, right? Like he's like, hey, listen, yeah. I'm a man who wants to fuck, and yeah, I'm just yeah, yeah. going to say that. Uh, is, is, is this something similar or are we talking about different no, things? No, 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 no. No disrespect to ARC, may he rest in peace, but um, uh, no, not at all. Because there's a difference between, I, I, I mean, personally, I didn't think his, his technology was particularly intelligent. Like, you can't just go up to women and say exactly what's on your mind and expect it to work, right? Because we operate differently. Um, so no, I'm not saying that I, I'm going up there and say I'm going to slide my cock inside you like he would say uh, it's it's the subtext of what's being said that's more important than than mm. what is being said right so if i go stop you can't walk past we have to meet the because i think you're hot and i want to slide my dick inside you is implied okay right yeah the intention does the the intention does the heavy lifting okay uh so yes i mean sure i'm verbally direct but i know i'm not like okay. uh what would you call it? Vulnerable. No, I, I, I understand how you're getting at. Yeah, what, what you're describing is, is, is pretty much exactly what I teach as well. Is like, okay, so what you're saying is the, the intent is internal. You know what you want. You're not ashamed about it, right? And that's being communicated through your subcommunications, through your tonality, body language, and all that stuff. But you're not being verbally explicit. Verbally, no. you're still kind of being uh, more tactful. Okay, got it. Uh, let's move on to the emotional impact. Uh, so uh, my question is, what is the difference between pressure release and emotional impact? Well, pressure and release creates a particular type of emotion, right? Which is, which is anticipation, nervousness, expectation. So that's one form of like emotional sequence, which leads to like a resolution, right? So, I mean, a, a comedians use, good comedians use pressure and release all the time, right? They, they set the audience up. There's a the pressure of what's going to happen. They drop the, the, mm. uh, fucking line and then the release the emotional release is everyone laughs because now they get it so okay so that's a particular type of emotional um impact whereas there are all sorts of other ones right i mean obviously if we're creating rapport with somebody or we're trying to actually reduce the pressure on the situation because she's really shy and if i go in with like my heavy intent it's going to make a shut down um you know making her laugh like anything, anything where I'm where I'm able to elicit a, a type of emotion is what I'm looking at, as opposed to like the pressure release is a particular one because it does have more of a powerful effect, uh, especially in the short term. Is pressure release kind of similar to push and pull? Let me try and remember. Give me an example of what was old school push and pull. 
push and pull is like you you push like for example you you say something like you come you, you're going really strong then you pull back a little bit right and then you're a little bit more coy uh so it's kind of like you're varying between like being kind of like intense and being very laid back that's basically the gist of it yeah i mean that's that's an, an example of pressure and release for sure i mean like it, you know if i say listen i don't want any listen i don't want any trouble that creates pressure right like whatever whatever like the, the because there is an unresolved tension is what i'm talking okay. about right then the, how i choose to release that pressure will determine what the effect it has on somebody most nice guys never put pressure on girls ever yeah i agree with that and when should the pressure be released should it be released uh like just when you guys are about to have sex should it be released when you bring the girl home or should there be multiple uh pressure releases throughout the interaction multiple of course yeah it's it's a, it's a sign it's a wave like i mean okay. leading up to the first kiss is build up of pressure because it's sexual tension sexual tension the common mistake being someone mentions the kiss or oh, can i kiss you or they say anything about the kiss and they release the pressure before the lips touch when it should be the lips touching which is what creates the release of the pressure i think you and i teach somewhat similar things we just word them completely differently because as you're talking i'm thinking about like um building sexual tension. That's one of the biggest things I say. Like when I, when I have a girl back in my place, when I'm at a bar, uh, my goal isn't to like make her attracted to me or something like that. I assume attraction. My goal is to create as much sexual tension as possible. I know that if there's a lot of sexual tension and logistics are good, I start escalating, uh, you know, it's, things are going to go down. Versus if there's no sexual tension, that's when all the objections come up. The girl's like, oh, I don't know. It's that time of the month type of thing. Um, yeah what, what would you say is the difference between pressure release and sexual tension or is sexual tension a type of pressure release yes it's a type of pressure release yeah because i can have you know i can have completely non-sexual pressure on somebody just by challenging them by saying what do you mean by that that's like that creates pressure where you have to justify your situation it's not sexual um yeah so then when it becomes sexual tension is when it, when there is a physical touch involved or when we're getting you know getting physical so yes Okay. Yeah. So I think, I think we kind of covered all these points. I guess it's interesting that everything you mentioned falls under inner game. Uh, what role do you think outer game plays and uh, what are some outer game, uh, I guess, like things that you would teach a, a potential client? Everything I've described to you is both inner game and outer game. There is outer game applications of all of those things. Can you, can you expand on that? I did already. Uh, okay. So, well, I start, I start like my, I start with awareness, right? Cause if a student is up in his head and he's trying to remember things, he's useless to me. He can't mm -hmm. like, he's just, he, all he is is an automaton trying to recite lines. It's, he's not a pick, he can't pick up effectively. Uh -huh. So I need to get him into a state where he's like in flow, where he's in sync with, with the environment around him. Uh -huh. Projection, projection of intent will, okay, of course. So when he's going and doing direct openers, for example, which you know, I encourage, uh, then I will be, I'll be, you know, I'll be giving things to say or suggestions to say, but I, but it's not what's important. What is important is that he aligns his states, that he is actually congruent in what with what it is that he's delivering. Even if he's just going and saying hi, you look lovely today, um, because it's the congruency that makes a man attractive, in my opinion. Because there's all sorts of there's all sorts of ways a man can be attractive, but but none of them include him not being what he appears to be or not or, or uh, looking like there's some kind of bullshit, right? There's, there's all sorts of attractive men as long as they can actually be coherent uh, and calibrated. So in terms of like how, how like I apply pressure release, for example, okay, so we would use qualifying frameworks like QCQ, question, challenge, qualify, which is where we're asking qualifying questions. Girl gives us an answer. We challenge her on the answer. Then we validate her on it. Okay, that's an example of like an outer game specific. Um, but yeah, I mean, like for every, yeah, for every principle, for every scenario, if you give me any specific ones, I can give you out of game examples of those. Yeah. Let's, let's try to do something like texting, for example. So let's say we have a, like, okay, like I'll use some client examples. So I've had like, you know, most of the clients I have have issues with inner and outer game, but sometimes I coach guys who are naturals whose inner game is like completely on point. They have really good confidence. They have very high self-esteem. Uh, all the stuff you're describing, they intuitively do. However, they're making a series of technical problems. Like for example, setting up a date, right? So there's optimal and suboptimal ways to set up a date over text. The suboptimal way would be like, hey, you free tomorrow night at 9 p.m., right? 
the girl has to now agree to three things at once. She has to agree to uh, the idea of meeting up with you. She has to agree to the uh, where the date. Well, I guess, okay, two things. Uh, she has to agree to the idea of meeting up with you, and she has to agree to that time, right? So you're increasing yeah. your chance of gay and no, versus if you're like, hey, we should get together for a drink sometime soon. She agrees to the general idea. You say, what's your schedule like? You figure out her schedule. And now that you know she's free Tuesday at 9, you're like, let's get drinks Tuesday 9 p.m., right? So that technical difference could actually make a substantial difference in the long run about how many girls who have, yes. Yeah, so I guess in that example when it comes to like setting up a date or texting how would like some of these principles play out with the like the technical things that you're going to be doing uh texting less so i mean the way the way that you just described that's that's very similar to my texting format because uh, i'm glad you brought that up that you know it okay. sounds very form form like a formal business deal to be like yeah 9 p.m at this at this corner of this 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 in this street so yeah i mean i have a similar thing where i text a first text which which encourages a reply but doesn't require one uh second second one is agreeing on the general time you know generally that we're going to meet for a date and the third one is starting to lock it down for to the specifics of logistics so yeah so i mean what else do you want to know about i like i mean i prefer we not like i don't want to get into a conversation about texting texting is not something i enjoy or particularly want to do i just text girls those three things to get them on dates that's that's uh, that's about about all i know about texting i'm not i'm not you know fancy texter yeah, I got you. No, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is uh, like, because we, we extensively just talked about inner game, right? Which is obviously important. I just want to figure out in your methodology, how important is outer game and how you go about teaching that. That's where I'm coming from. Texting is just an example I'm giving you to try to uh, poke further and understand your teachings. Well, I think I already explained. There is no, there is, there is no separation between these two things. Like, what do you like of course like outer game like the question is is outer game important is a redundant question because we can't nothing happens until we go and talk to girls so yeah i mean can you rephrase the question i'm not sure what yeah let me try to think of a different way to explain it right so there's uh there's your internal stuff that's going on which is again the stuff we just uh, described is, is like how tech uh you're being present uh, you having an emotional impact, right? But then there's like the small technical things you could do. Like, for example, do you set up a date halfway in between or do you set up a date uh, near your house? Do you go in for the makeout right away when you bring the girl home? Or do you, you know, let her get comfortable, let her have a few drinks, chill out for a little bit? Uh, you know, like like when you're escalating on a girl, do you just like whip your dick out or do you, you know, do it in a very smooth, progressive way? You start kissing down her body, right? So that's kind of what I'm getting at. Okay, let's go through each of those questions specifically. Then. <laughs> okay, I feel, I, feel, I, feel, I, feel like, I feel like we're misunderstanding each other. I'm just trying to. Yeah, uh, I think so. Let, let me try to approach it from a different angle, right? Let's say you get a client who every single one, like he has his inner game completely figured out. Like everything you're describing, he has. He has high self esteem. Everything is good, right? But he's still struggling with girls because he's making technical mistakes. And he's like, "Hey, I just want uh, you to evaluate my technique. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Like, how would you go about doing that?" By putting a microphone on him, putting him in set and listening to every interaction and then breaking down at granular levels everything that he does, like any other dating coach. Right. Okay. So you're breaking it down. What are the when you're breaking down, what are the specific outer whatever outer game things that you're looking at? What are the technique things that you're looking at? What okay, I'm to... I'm looking I'm looking at his vocal tonality. I'm looking at whether he's using preframes correctly or not. I'm looking at if he's moving into recent experience conversation. So, you know, what's going on for the girl right now and then finding a bridge to move into something that's important to her. Then he should be moving into qualifying the girl. So to getting, getting her to qualify herself to him. And then when she has done that and only then, then she has earned the right to be asked out on a date. Uh, I would recommend that he tries to see her within 24 hours and that he should try and arrange the date in the interaction itself in general, rather than trying to do it over text because it's less likely to flake. Probably. Yeah, yeah. So you 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 just touched on like what I was trying to get at. So let's let's explore each one of these a little bit more. So all the things you mentioned, what I would consider examples of external games. So can you just expand on each one of these a little bit more? You mean you want me to def define a preframe? Yeah, just explain how you would what exactly is a preframe and how you would teach someone to have preframe. Well, okay. So a preframe is create is explaining the context for why you're there. Okay. So like the classic old preframes back in the day were, you know, Sasha Day game type ones, don't worry, I'm not crazy or whatever. But it's like, okay, if I see that the woman is carrying two bags of shopping and she's got her headphones on and I run over and I go, Hey babe, I wanted to talk to you, blah, blah, blah. I, I'm not particularly socially intelligent because I'm not mm -hmm. uh, letting her know that I understand that she's carrying shopping. So 
like a preframe is to see the thing, call it out, and if you can do it in a fun way, then cool. Uh, and that tends to short circuit the initial resistance to talking to a stranger. If the girl's you know walking twice as fast as everyone else, she's got flat, flat blacks on, she's got a ponytail, and she's wearing blacks. That means that she's on a she's in a rush to work. And if I go over all super chill and charismatic, right. go, hey, I just, she's going to run off. And I say, you're you're late for work, right? She's like, yep. In that case, let's walk together. Uh, okay. Is an example. Is an example of pretty. Got it. Okay, makes sense. Let's move on to the second thing that you mentioned. Recent experience conversation. Yeah. That's just essentially that's just uh, talking about what's going on for the girl right now. Because like so many guys, they they do their opener and then they think they need to jump into something really complicated and deep. Uh -huh. uh, no, it creates some context. So it's literally like what she's up to now, weekend this summer what's generally going on in her life, stuff that's very easy for her, for her to answer and doesn't require any investment on her part, really, uh, okay. but gives us, a, gives us a basic context. And the point of that is, is nothing to do with what we're saying. It's to, it's to sync up with the communication style, tonality, cadence, so that we're in the same vibe together, let's say. Right, so like she's walking around with shopping bags, being like, oh, you did some shopping today, I see. Something along the lines of that, right? Mm, that, that, that would more be just like a, whatever, a throwaway opener. I'm, I'm more talking about, okay, like, to to remove to minimize the the response of like trying to jump into something deep early and the girl going what well, that's that's an odd jump okay. uh then it's simply like what's going on for you in life right now like what are you really into right now uh it's nothing fancy it's just like to get a context of what's going on for the girl okay got it now let's move on to the mm -hmm. third thing that you mentioned right well I don't do this in a chronological order. Like, okay, I'm giving it to you in, chrono in chronology. No, I understand. I don't teach things yeah, yeah. In, a, in a chronology. We teach them in a spider web. All right, yeah. so, okay, then, then we're moving on into connecting and qualifying and flirting frameworks, All right? So this, this is where we, like, I, I tend to think of conversation as a crossroads. So whenever the girl gives me something, I have multiple directions I can go in. I can choose if I want to connect, qualify, or flirt would be the primary actions. And so mm -hmm. then I give guys different ways to apply those things. Okay, got it. And the last thing you said, something about setting up a date. Well, I said that if you're, when you're closing a girl on the street, well, anywhere, I would rather agree to the date in, in person, right? So okay. like we actually, as opposed to try and organize it over the, over text. Of course, you can't always do that, but you know, that's, I'm, that's the way that I see clients get far more, far less flakes is by getting the girl to agree to the date while you're still in front of each other. Sure. Yeah. Where do you stand on Insta dates? Awesome thing to do for for newbies. I think it's really good because it um it just shows you it's possible. Really good thing to do in kind of uh like right now. You know, I'm at Rio. Like going down the beach and doing Insta dates on the beach is awesome. Like a place where it's like a summery vibe or a holiday vibe where people like get into a flow where a girl just goes, "Oh fuck it, I'll go and sit with you on the beach," and then oh let's go somewhere else. Like those things can definitely end up in in uh, you know same day lays. Um, I find maybe in bigger cities, maybe they're less effective in terms of like whether they actually translate into sex later. But I think it's it's a really good thing for a guy to do a number of times just to break that limiting belief. So you're like, oh, it is possible to just... And because there, there'll be some times when a guy meets a girl and she's good to go and it would and you need to go on an instant date oh. within an hour, otherwise she'll be bored 24 hours later. Yeah, kind of my perspective on this is I largely agree. I think it is a good thing for beginners. It gives you more exposure to talking to girls. Uh, it pushes you outside of your comfort zone. Uh, so for beginners, I definitely highly recommend. I would say for a guy who knows what he's doing, who's advanced, unless like the girl just gives you that like, yo, I got nothing going on right now vibe and I want to fuck, yeah. which you can pretty easily pick up on. When, the, when you're, you're the girl just wants to keep the conversation going, she's like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm just chilling, right? Unless you're getting that type of thing, I would say that the hour you spend in today would be better spent of getting five or ten more numbers, right? So then you have a higher volume to uh, bring from. So I would say that yeah. for advanced guy, it's not the most time efficient thing, uh, but for a beginner, it's good for other reasons. Yeah, yeah, because it's I mean, especially for beginners, they need like guys need practice not just in the first two minutes of the conversation. You know, that's one percent of a seduction. So yeah, actually getting to sit down and relax and have a comp half an hour conversation with a woman is a really good thing to do to get your chops up. Yeah. Are you, let, let me kind of transition a little bit. Are you familiar with uh, RSD Julian's uh, inner game um, tenants? Uh, yeah, they're like shouting stuff in front of an audience and getting people pumped up. No, no, no. <laughs> that's, that's what he does. No, he is, uh, it's in the product of Pimp. I thought that was, 
I thought he was uh, one of the better people to explain inner game. At least that's when it really clicked for me. This came out in like 2014, 2015, back when I was like kind of getting into game and learning it. And this like really just made things click for me. So here are the tenets, right? Uh, I may use the wrong wordage, but this, the right idea is correct. Uh, the first one is being purposeful, right? Which is kind of what we discussed already. The second one is being grounded, uh, which somewhat similar to being present. Uh, the third one is uh, to be like uh, controlled. So meaning you're not like jumpy and shit. You're very like smooth and progressive with what you do. And the last one is self-amused, right? So you're making yourself laugh. You're having fun yourself. Uh, what do you generally think about that? Uh, so the first two, what did you say was? Yeah, the first one is purposeful. Yeah. The second one is uh, grounded. Third one is controlled. Uh, which means like again you're being very smooth you're not like yeah. you know like out of nowhere and then the last one is self-amused well like any of these things they're buzzwords until they're explained so i mean all those words sound nice but what do they exactly mean like yeah like you can tell a guy to become purposeful grounded controlled and self-amused and he would like that as an idea but how do you make how do you actually implement any of those things is i think more important so yeah, like, sure. especially, especially something like being grounded because you can't think I'm grounded and become grounded. It's a practice and it, and it's a, and it's a requires re repetition as well. It's a, it requires like being a, co a constant process. Yeah. Well, I would say with the grounded one, it's actually the way you get there is kind of what you've already described, which is through presence and meditation and stuff like that. Right. That's going to make you more grounded. So you're talking to a girl, let's say you feel nervous, you visualize, actually you talk about the foot thing. I actually talk about that as well. Uh, you, you, uh, you know, feel the air come in and go into your stomach. You feel your feet touch the floor, right? You just kind of reassure yourself. Yeah. So that's kind of how you become more grounded. Uh, you know, in terms of the, uh, self-amused, that one is just like, instead of trying to please the girl, you do and say the things that make you laugh, right? But it needs to be balanced out. You can't be like, uh, you know, autistic about it. Uh, the yeah, purpose yeah. Of one, I think is probably one of the easier ones to implement. And that's, you just practice being more direct than you are. So guys, a lot of guys have the tendency to like be afraid to show intent. We don't want to be seen as creepy or whatever, as like grapey or whatever. Right. But just practicing, like proving to your subconscious that if you are straight up with a girl, nothing bad is going to happen. Sure. Yeah. And that, you know, they're all good buzzwords. Because a lot of the stuff you're describing is similar to that, which I guess kind of makes sense because, uh, yeah, like I, I like this concept and what you're saying kind of more or less makes sense mm -hmm. to me as well. Uh, let me let me transition to this. Uh, so you've been doing this for a while. How do you primarily meet girls now? Like, are you still uh, meeting girls primarily with a cold approach or is it just like all social circle? What's your kind of uh, thing like nowadays? Uh, yes, cold approach. Yes, social circle. But I would say primarily I've niched myself as a BDSM guy and mm -hmm. women I have, I get a lot of referrals because I'm well known within circles of girls for being exceptional at certain things in bed. Okay. Are you like involved with like, um, like, uh, like the fet life community? It's like, or is it more of like private type of like girls are putting in good words about you? Okay. Got it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. okay. That's interesting. Um, so basically you're saying like a girl will like tell her friend, like, yo, James, like, you know, fucking gave me the best BDSM experience ever. I came like 20 times. You should hang out with him. That sort of thing yep okay cool uh so then let, let's kind of move on to this thing that uh pretty broad question as well but how would you say a lot a lot of guys are not good in bed right like girls say this all the time you know oh my god yeah. i've never had an orgasm stuff like that right and the, t the two issues guys run into is one they can't get an erection right and two is premature ejaculation which I think both stem from anxiety and to some extent. Of course, there could be a theoretical physical problem, like you have a hormone imbalance, but typically it's a mental problem. So how would you advise guys to fix that problem and become better in bed so they can start getting those referrals too? Sure. Okay, here's a bunch of tips for that. Well, the, the, the first, you're right that it's uh, it's usually not medical. It's primarily, it's essentially just physical nervousness, right? And then we create, we create a bunch of stories along with it that makes it more complex. So... A number of things. The first thing is that most men are training to be really bad in bed with their porn use and masturbation. So uh -huh. I, I'm not I'm not like a nofap purist or anything, but it's like if you're jerking off with a hard grip. So the first thing is to most men use way too hard a grip, which doesn't replicate the the strength of a vagina. Uh, they're jerking off quickly, trying to and trying to make the cells come quickly. They're also in positions that don't replicate the way you would be during sex, right? So hunched over, you know, tensed shoulders and so on, like in, in positions that you then essentially your body now thinks this is your sexual position, 
All right. And then when you try and then when guys get in bed with a real life woman, it doesn't really feel the same and then they can have problems getting it up. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, those, those are, those are like, it's really important for guys. If, if guys have issues with this, the first thing they need to do is go and go on porn detoxes for sure. Mm -hmm. And you can do that gradual, gradually by like, instead of, yeah. instead of like trying to go completely cold Turkey, just watch like one erotic film from start to finish, as opposed to, you know, 15 tabs open with, with <laughs> Japanese tentacle uh, porn. Yeah. I got right. You. Yeah. So it's like, okay, re, re eroticizing yourself to just one woman is a good, mm -hmm. is a good thing. Um, jerking off with a lighter grip and then later on jerking off without any visual stimulation at all and just trying to do it with your own imagination. Uh, this is something that can over, it takes some time for it's like some guys, their dopamine circuits are completely fried from porn. Uh, right. and it can take, it can, it can take months and even a year to like to rebuild it, even if you're a young, strong guy. So there's those ones. Uh, secondarily, so when you get in bed with a woman, okay, so the, the reason why guys ejaculate too quickly is that they arouse, they lose control of their arousal state. So again, what I recommend is that you learn to do abdominal breathing, which is the ability to like lower the diaphragm and use the abdominal muscles to create like a bellows. Uh, so I used to have this problem, you know, back in the day, I used to come too quickly and I was studying lots of martial arts meditation. So I just tried to mix them. Uh, and so then I got in the habit of, as soon as I started getting, making out with a girl, like, you know, we're, we're in a seduction location and something's going to happen. I would very consciously slow my breath down to three second inhales and exhales, uh, which would then slow my heart rate down, slow my hormonal responses. I would bring my attention and my awareness to my hands, like to whatever part of the body was actually touching her rather because I, rather than being up in my head and worrying and being concerned about it. And then. The other thing that's really important to be able to do is to deal with it when it happens, right? Because for most men, not being able to get it up or coming too quickly, right, is is an extremely shameful experience, and yeah. it happens, and they don't, and you know, they don't say anything. They, the girl says, "Oh, what's wrong?" You're like, eh, "Nothing," and it's just a, a really awkward situation. All right. You can actually, you can even if it's not a great situation, you can turn it into a powerful learning situation. So, let's say you can't get it up. I used to have this situation. And, you know, the girl's like kissing slowly down and I'm like Dick's limp as celery and old celery. I'm like, oh, fuck, this is not going to work. So then I would just take her head, bring her back up and say, listen, sometimes when I'm with a new partner, it doesn't work immediately. I think I just get nervous. Let's do. And then I would suggest doing something that was tactile, but not sexual. Right. So mm -hmm. guys, if you're having the problem where you don't get it up, the, it's the pressure of needing to have a hard dick now and trying to like that you have to perform immediately that makes mm -hmm. it you know, hard. So not, not hard. Um, so instead I would suggest, let's have a bath, let's have a shower. I'll give you a massage. Let's just cuddle and make out. Let's watch something on YouTube and just cuddle. Right. So like something where we're still physically in contact, but the expectation and the need for me to get a hard dick and have sex right now is gone. And often I found that that, that would fix it. Um, and when I, when I voiced it to women in that way, then women were on my side, right? Because if I don't say anything and the, you've got a limp dick, the girl's going to She's going to either think she's ugly or you're gay. She'll, she'll project it inwards or outwards. But when you just say, look, I'm not a robot. Sometimes this happens with new partners. Can we uh, yeah. try something else? Then I, then the girl wants to be on your side. She wants to help. And then usually I found that that, that works. Same thing goes like, if you do come too quickly, like I remember Liam, Liam, one experience where he came too quickly and he just said to the girl, Oh, you're so fucking hot that you just made me come so quickly. Oh, that's exactly what I do. It's a great reframe, right? Because it's yeah. like, yeah, it's it's you like play, not, you uh, definitely blame it on the girl. Like, damn, you're yeah. just, those tits are just too nice. Yeah, Could, instead oh of like, God. oh, I'm, I'm ashamed, yeah, I'm a yeah. loser. It's just like, oh, I'm, you're just so hot. You, you turn me on and yeah, maybe come. So, so, then, so then the girl feels validated and she feels yeah. sexy, and then and then it's fine. And then you try again half an hour later. Yeah. So yeah, there's I mean there's a there's a few things I have. I mean I teach entire like live classes and online modules and lots lots of stuff in terms of, of building building stamina because there is there's a lot more you can do with it in terms of learning tantric breathing exercises redirection of focus and energy exercises uh and like let's say self-cultivation or or uh, conscious jerking off yeah i, I want to add one more thing to that this is a nice little like life hack or sex hack whatever you want to call it so uh if you're having sex with a girl and you feel yourself close to coming uh, you can pull out and just eat her out eat her out for a few minutes until like your fucking desire to bust a nut goes down. Then you go back to fucking her. Right. Because if you just stop completely that 
kills the tension completely. But if you alternate between in her out and fucking her, you know, you can you could go for like a very long period of time, right? Even if you're like kind of a premature ejaculator. So that's one thing that I discovered, I don't know, fucking a decade ago. That's been pretty helpful. Because when I first started having sex at the ripe old age of like 21, uh, I used to like bust really fast, right? Like it was, uh, you know, that was just an issue I had over and over again. I never had an issue with not being able to get a boner for me. It was always just like I would bust too fast. Uh, but then when I started doing that, I started alternating. And also when I started becoming more confident, uh, that's when, you know, things change for me. And also I feel like sometimes you just got to break yourself out of that mental cycle, right? Because if every time you're with a girl, you have a sexual issue, right? It's going to become this like vicious cycle. So if you can just break yourself out of that for like a few sessions, then suddenly your brain resets. It's like, hey, I can do this. I can actually, you know, have a good sexual experience with a girl without having to worry, right? So sometimes I feel like it's just breaking yourself out of that. I think the danger with using things like Viagra or Cialis, uh, I don't think they're particularly physically dangerous at all, as long as you don't abuse it. But I feel like it can be uh, mentally dangerous because you develop a mental uh addiction to it so you so if you don't have viagra for example you're worried and you're like fuck i'm not gonna be able to get hard and then becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and i've seen guys very young guys who just take viagra a few times and then they can't fuck anymore without viagra because they get too nervous and they're not gonna be able to hard i feel like it can become this like really vicious cycle totally yeah you get anchored you get anchored to the putting the pill in your mouth as the thing that's going to fix the thing and if you don't have it then it's a problem yeah i mean i would i would highly recommend guys are not trying to like you know that's that's when you're 60 70 80 or whatever then go nuts take as, yeah, yeah, as yeah. much viagra as, viagra as you want but like there's ways to get hard dicks that don't involve those pills Absolutely. yeah i think also in terms of what you're saying initially about like no fap i think another key benefit of that is it's going to give you more motivation so if you're like at a bar right and a girl you know maybe you get a few rejections right and you're like i can just go home and jerk off to a girl that's just as hot or hot as her for free on Pornhub, right? Your motivation might go down. You'd be like, wow, fuck it. I'm going to call it quits. But if you're horny and you're like, the only way I can bust a nut is if I bring a girl back, you're going to try a lot harder. So I think if you're like advanced, it doesn't really matter as much when you're a beginner, especially you're dealing with a lot of things like approach anxiety, that could be a massive kick in the ass. It's going to push you in the right direction, right? Sexual selection could be a huge, huge motivator. So I think that's another advantage. I'm also not like a no fat purist. I think like, you know, from time to time, it's whatever. Uh, but I think that if you're jerking off every day, that's going to very directly fuck over your potential pickup results and your results with women. And yeah, also, uh, in terms of the other thing you said, it can uh, make the sex, you know, not as good because you're used to like watching like fucking freaky Japanese gangbangs and then you're just having sex with like a regular blonde girl. It's like, what the fuck? Like you're just, the stimulation is not going to be there. The dopamine hits not going to be there. So I do agree it's important to take yourself out of that like uh, dopamine programming that you get with watching insane amounts of porn. Yeah, and for me, I don't, I don't care about busting nuts at all. I don't, I mean, I come once every four partners. Like for me, I'm especially, you know, I'm 43 years old. I sleep with women half my age. I don't, I'm not trying to bust a nut. I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying, I'm trying to do the opposite actually. Like I mean, most of the, like I will only ejaculate if like my body is screaming to do it and the, the chemistry between us is electric. Otherwise I'd rather cycle up, cycle it up my spine. Interesting. So you intentionally, uh, so this is intentional. You intentionally, uh, with most girls, uh, prevent yourself from coming. Uh, why is that? Well, because firstly, I see a lot of women and I'm, and they come to me for particular types of sex and I need to be on point. So mm -hmm. I, yeah, I couldn't do as much as I did if I did. Okay. Um, I don't really like the feeling afterwards of coming. I, I feel like I've, I'm drained. Like it's not, again, it's not that I never do it. It's an, uh, it's, I will choose to do it. And I'll say no to girls all the time. I mean, girls are often ask and I'll say no many times, uh, especially if like I've got a girl for a weekend or something, I want to remain hungry. Like I, I don't want to come and then be like lazy and not interested. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, maybe I'm not nearly to that extent, but I know like if uh, like me and my girlfriend would ever hang out, we're planning on shooting some TikToks. She's like, oh, babe, let's uh, let's have a quickie before the videos. Uh, and like, I know if we fuck like and she comes, she's in a better mood. She's more energetic versus me. I'm like, wait, 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 let's wait until we've done the videos. Can I get a little sleepy? Yeah. I'm a little lethargic. It takes me a minute to recover or more way more than that. So, yeah, I do guess. You know how to, do you know how to do the big, big draw? Like you might want to try. What uh, is the? Well, okay. So you're having your quickie and instead of coming, when you get to like 80, 90% arousal, take a deep breath in and roll your eyes back to the, into your head and place your tongue on the roof of the mouth. So it goes like this. And then I hold, hold the breath with my eyes up 
And so okay. I've drawn all this, drawn all this energy right up. It's like really hot. It feels quite pressurized in my head. And then think of it like a snow globe. You know, you shake those snow globes and then the snow filters down. So on the exhales, and I really like totally relax my stomach, my chest, my face, everything. So basically what I'm doing is I bring my awareness from the end of my dick. I breathe in and I draw energy. Through, well, I suck it out of the woman, and draw it all the way up my spine, pump it up into my head. So it's like, feels like my head's going to explode. Then I do that breath and it filters down. Now the sensation that I have is like super alert and, and it's, it's sex sexual, but it's not like, like it's, it's, it's a full body orgasm in some sense. It doesn't feel like the male jizzing out the end of your dick kind of orgasm, but it's, it filters it all throughout your body. So that's usually what I do. And then I'll walk away, I can walk away from sex feeling not only completely satisfied, but actually much more energetic and much more alert than I was before. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. I'll give that a thought. Uh, all right, let's let's move on to some Q&A. We got a lot of good questions uh, that you guys are asking. Uh, okay, Alex, ask him what he thought of Julian's transformation from PUA to meditation self-help. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, we all know why he did that. Because he got married? <laughs> well, it's just, just I mean, all, RSD pulled all this to pick up stuff because Tyler was worried about it and um, and because they got too much heat. And so they switched over into stuff that was more palatable, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would generally agree with that. Uh, but don't you think sometimes like you evolve like as you go along? Like for me, when I was like getting into game, I was all about like fucking as many girls as possible. Which is not, I legitimately yeah, care about fucking as many girls. Like I'm happy with my yeah. girlfriend and occasionally having, you know. Fucking I mean, look, really, like the only thing, I, look, the only thing I've seen of Julian's transformation stuff is, is, Look, a self-help guru who stands up in front of an audience and uses uh, crowd control techniques to get people pumped up mm -hmm. to, is it's a very cheap parlor trick. Yeah. Like it's extremely easy to do. I can like anyone can do it. You get you just get people go, you make up some, you just go, all right, guys, we're gonna go rah, 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 and one, two, three, and rah, and no. rah, and whatever. And in five minutes, everyone's gonna feel excited and they're gonna feel awesome because you get a crowd of people chanting anything. Uh, then they feel good. That's why people go to football matches. So yeah. as far as I can see, that's all he does. Like, and what else can you can't do personal transformation on stage? Like, okay, like Tony Robbins or whatever. Like that stuff's just showmanship. So that's my I, I generally agree with you. I mean, it's kind of a shame because to like when I was getting a game 2013, 2014, uh, there was a lot of things I learned from old school RSD Julian content, but you, you can't even see that content now unless you have a friend who like downloaded it. All that content is gone. And yeah. I was kind of like, wishy-washy type of stuff where you're like like you maybe feel good after you listen to it but it doesn't really help you in any practical way so yeah i kind of agree with you uh that's probably one of my bigger bones to pick with rsd uh okay question for james what happened to liam mccray so uh he's just doing behind the scenes now right yeah i mean liam was a public figure since he was 18 and he was and he decided at some point that he didn't want to be a public figure anymore and so he pulled himself off the internet and he does a lot of other stuff i mean he's living a very extremely wild and interesting life uh but he's just doing it behind the scenes these days so i mean he, he's got he's married to a finnish model and uh he's uh where is he right now i don't even know where he is he checks in with me once a week and he's in some crazy country doing some crazy stuff with rich guys so he's still around. Don't you worry, his name's still around. Let me ask you this question. Where what do you where do you see yourself in like 10, 15 years? Like do you think you're gonna have a family or you think you're gonna keep doing what you're doing? Where do you see yourself winding up? Uh I don't know. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, that's kind of like that's I kind mean, of my answer too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, the problem is I could do anything. Like, that's the problem. It's like I, I have kind of infinite choice now. I'm you know, I have freedom, I have money, I have uh abilities like i'm not going to be teaching this in 10 years that's for sure like i'm 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 certainly on the tail end of my teaching in terms of like the things i'm really interested in now is much more building my temple in portugal and growing olive trees and uh like doing spiritual pursuits and playing music st like you know okay are you uh, really like, building a temple not only am I, I've, I've already built a replica of the Hanging Garden of Babylon made out of stone in my farm in Portugal. Okay. I'm excited mm -hmm. to see that. Let me know when that's done. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay a visit. We'll do a little vlog. Right. Uh, James, what are your thoughts on the black pill? Um, 
my thoughts are it's understandable right like i what, what i'm not is i'm not down on people who have really hard times like and, and that's not just men with women like i understand the world is a fucking brutal place and it's not fair and i understand that the sexual marketplace is also brutal and unfair um and so i think i can i can see why people turn to any kind of nihilism and despair it makes sense mm -hmm. um and look you can filter for any truth that you wish like you'll, you'll be able to prove black pill theory you know you can prove that the world is black pill by filtering for those kinds of things right selection bias yeah but it's like my thoughts on it really is it's like the problem is that especially with stuff like meek tail like attaching a an ideology to your sexuality only hurts you Right, like mm -hmm. so, like guys who are like i'm gonna go my own way well no one cares like mm -hmm. it's not like boycotting the women that the women give any sh kind of shit. like they've already right. boycotted you anyway um and choosing like enforcing celibacy on yourself when you're not a, an asexual person is not fun okay. so yeah i mean ultimately i don't have a judgment i just think it's unhealthy for the individual because uh, even if it's like ultimately true in the like in like the broad scope of like if we look at all the stats and we see that the way that beauty and sex is distributed across the planet we can certainly see that obviously it pulls in certain areas and there's other areas where people are completely poor uh you and i know because we've taught many guys of all sorts of types that guys who like were not on the sexual market ladder can figure out ways to to jack the system by learning game or you know improving their looks and uh going out there and actually doing something so yeah my, my thoughts on it it's like okay i get it but it doesn't help you so like you can either have your ideology or you can have progress yeah like, no i actually fun. completely agree with what you said i like anything that's solutions oriented i don't like anything that involves you just obsessing about the problem which is why there's yeah. there's like two types of black doors there's like the men's maxing channel i don't know if you're familiar with him but he doesn't complain he doesn't whine uh, all he does is offer practical looks, maxing advice. Hey, this is what you could do. Train your facial muscles. Hey, this is what you can do. Get in shape. I'm a big fan of stuff like that. Right. But uh, a lot of the black pillar channels aren't that it's not solutions. It's just complaining, whining, victim mindset. And I think in my opinion, a victim mindset is one of the most dangerous types of mindsets you can have when it comes to success with women. I think that I used to have some elements of victim mindset. It had definitely massively got my way. I didn't have even have a full on victim mindset. When I see guys who have a full on victim mindset, they're probably the hardest students to teach has been my experience. I don't know if that's the same thing for you. I'd say the hardest ones actually are the ones who are, who arrogantly think they know what they're doing. Those are the hardest. Uh, the second hardest would be the guys that are, that like see negativity every, everywhere. Mm. Um, yeah, like, I guess the other thing that I question a lot with black pill MGTOW stuff is like the, the sexual market value system is not set in stone, right? Like, so like guys, I think guys really take the idea that it's all about looks and height uh, mm. and money to be the only, you know, to be, to be the most power, to be the most important things all the time. Of course they matter. Of course it makes a difference, but you know, you and I have seen plenty of guys who are average, like all the guys I know who are exceptionally good with girls are just, they're not, they're not ugly, but they're just average. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not about that. being chads exactly. It's it's like like women are attracted to, to the man, the masculinity, that the the like the eminent emanating masculinity that comes off him, and that can come in all sorts of shapes and packages. Yeah, I, I completely agree with everything you said. All right, let's move on to this question. Ask James if he ever had partners with other PUAs to run unique programs. Um, does he mean have I done collaborations before? Yeah. Do you ever like, I don't know, do like, like, for example, let another PUA like do like yeah, a yeah. coaching thing for yourself or something like that? Sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, like the guys that I've worked with over the years that are not in my company would be Sasha Day Game back when he was Sasha Day Game. Uh, John Keegan, I still work with absolutely all the time. Uh, and Gareth Jones, those are the main guys that I've worked, done collabs with. Like, I mean, I've, I've guest starred on, you know, guest coached on Vince Calvin workshops and fucking. I don't know, back in the day, you know, when I was going around doing conferences and doing doing speaking at wherever for whoever would talk, who would, whoever would have me, then I did a lot more of that club stuff. But yeah, these days I, I only work with Gareth and uh, Keegan. Uh, you and Sasha still keep in touch? Yes, we do keep in touch. Like we are, we 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 have very different ide ideologies and belief structures, but we're still very good friends because he's gone full QAnon, and uh, oh, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not that. Uh, but he's one of he's still one of my best friends.
because he's, okay. he's a fucking he's a lot he's a wonderful human being he's just also totally crazy gotcha okay fair enough uh james what are your three favorite countries you've conducted programs in serbia well i don't want to say this because then then fucking dudes go there uh, i'll make some up that i don't like <laughs> uh well, I think, you're, you said, I think you're overestimate how popular my podcast is. I don't have that much. Okay, all right. All right. Cool. Well, because we made the mistake. We used to talk about Budapest all the time, and then Budapest got overrun, and yeah. so we stopped talking about it. Uh, well, yeah, Belgrade is Serbia used to be. I mean, I don't know now. I don't go there anymore. Barcelona is an excellent teaching city, um, and Prague. Like that, they're, they're probably my three favorite teach, cities to teach in because they're compact, they're small, there's lots of hot girls, lots of foot traffic. Yeah. You know, fun, fun, easy cities to work within. Okay, fair enough. You ever travel to uh, South America, like Colombia? I'm in Brazil now. Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah, uh, I like I like South America a lot. At least for me, I'm into like the kind of Latino type of girls. My girlfriend is Colombian. I'm a big fan of that, so I love Colombia. Never been to Brazil, but I've heard good things. Yeah, this is my first time. It's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Gotcha, James. How do you stay disciplined, and striving for more as time goes on? Uh, I'm not disciplined. What gave, you, what gave you that thought? <laughs> uh, like, I, I, I mean, I, I have a lot of respect for people who have that like hustler mindset where they, you know, get up and eight and they do this, you know, they have their bulletproof coffee and then they do their workout and then they do their thing. And then, you know, like that, that kind of guy, that's not me. Um, I am a mixture of both extremely motivated and extremely lazy and often on the same day. My, my like getting things done process is, is that I know I will get it done. That like, that's like, that's pretty much my strategy is like, whatever happens, I'll make sure if I say I'm going to do something, I know I am going to do it, but I'm not like, I'm not someone who is like disciplined and organized at all. I, I that's why I need a team around me who are Austrian to do that for me. Okay. James, I got to ask you this question because there's this one guy in the chat who literally won't stop fucking spamming it. He seems very, okay. very determined to know. Uh, yeah. I think it's kind of a dumb question, but we're just going to ask you, what is your approximate late yeah. count? I'm, of course, I'm not going to answer that question. Okay, there we go. That's kind of, that's kind of what I thought was going to happen. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the next one. Just like the question is so good. So 2005. Yeah, many I more know. women than you, many more women than he's fucked, let's say. All right, next. James, what do you think are the best ways to increase testosterone? I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not one of the, I'm not a health guy. I don't know. Okay, fair enough. Ask, uh, ask a nutritionist. Uh, I'll I mean, quickly, certainly, I'll, I, I, what I would say is fucking lots of young girls seems to keep me fairly young. So, yeah, I'll quickly answer the question. It's a combination of three things your diet, your sleep, and your exercise. Uh, diet and sleep are by far the most important ones. So, eating a diet that's high, uh, that's high in healthy fats is very important because hormones that come from fats. Uh, making sure you have adequate proteins is good. Making sure you don't have any micronutrient deficiencies. So, that's like drinking fresh green juice and taking even a multivitamin. Uh, so, that's the diet part. Uh, also making sure you get enough calories in the exercise part is doing heavy compound lifts, doing things like cardio while it's beneficial in other areas of your life. It's not going to increase your testosterone. In fact, uh, excessive running may decrease your testosterone. We're doing heavy compound lifts. That's what boosts testosterone and also your growth hormone production and making sure you get at least eight hours of sleep and it's quality sleep. And that's the key parts of that quality sleep. Those are the things you can do to naturally increase your testosterone. Also, there's certain supplements you could take. Uh, zinc and boron are probably the only two that have some scientific, uh, Backing for why they help. So yeah. Uh, what did you okay. say? Zinc and zinc and what? Boron. Boron. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you. That was good. Good advice. Uh, okay. Let's move on to the next one. Does he think Toronto is one of the most difficult countries to game to game in? Well, you mean Canada is one of the difficult countries? Um, I've only been to Vancouver in Canada and i was teaching there uh what i found there was like there just wasn't any beautiful women was my experience okay interesting so no i mean no it certainly isn't you know i mean have you gamed in morocco that's harder uh any western country is easy to game in there's no such thing as a hard western country like it's hard to do it in india or pakistan or saudi arabia it's all it's all a matter of perspective right so if you're like a millionaire and you meet a billionaire you might think you're poor but if you meet a homeless guy you yeah. think you're rich so if like uh you know 
Colombia, for example, is going to be a lot easier than uh, North America. But North mm. America is going to be a lot easier than like fucking Morocco or Saudi Arabia or like one of those mm. countries, or fucking mm. North Korea or something like that, right? So there, it, it just all depends what perspective you're coming from. But uh, generally speaking, what I found to be some of the well, the easiest, easiest is Southeast Asia. Uh, second place would be like South America, certain South American countries, and then you get into like the Western countries. Uh, okay, uh, Alex, can you ask him how to get rid of insecurities? Which what what insecurity? Like, give me a give me a specific insecurity. Insecurity might be is that you think you're not good enough for the girl. Well, he's one way to. It's just it's just an idea. Uh, what if what if the truth is you're not good enough for that girl? Like, sit with the sit with the idea that you aren't good enough, and see and then see like if you could survive not being good enough. Because the reality is all of us are not good enough for somebody. Like we're we're all unworthy in some kind of way. And that's the core, the core insecurity I found that men have is is worthiness, like and particularly with, with related to women. Um I think for me, like I just came to a certain point where I real where I realized like, yeah, I am completely unworthy to girls that think I'm not worthy of them for whatever reason they think that. And therefore I in their eyes, I am the loser, I am the I am the freak or whatever, and that's fine. Like you have so, to be, you have to be willing to be the freak, the loser, the outcast in order to be the hero. So you're saying basically whatever insecurity you have, just fully accept it and embrace it and run with it and see what happens. Is that kind of the gist of it? It's it's a, well because it's just a thought experiment. I'm not saying this is like the answer. I'm just giving him an idea, okay. which is that essentially like because the the what we're trying to do with their insecurities is run away from them or, or quickly try and solve them and not face mm -hmm. them in some kind of way. Uh, you do need to dive into your shadow at some point like you need to understand the shadow side of yourself uh and we can't just grin and do positive affirmations and pretend it's not there because no. we have shadow aspects so yeah it's like okay like if you were if you were unworthy of this woman could you still go and say hi to her like maybe it maybe it even takes the pressure off maybe it's right. like all right i'm already done like it's just it's just a different way of looking things rather than trying to protect your ego and and trying to like get rid of an insecurity it's like okay like of course we have insecurities like life is not secure we have to have insecurities they're gonna they you're never gonna have a situation where you feel 100 percent confident all the time i don't know anyone who lies who's like that or if you know occasionally very delusional people um so it's like I mean you know I have insecurities I have days where I feel like a loser and I'm just like I'm feeling I'm I am feeling like and being like and okay today I am kind of a loser all right I can live with that now let's do some other stuff that turns me into a not loser yeah the way I've always approached it is um you can't logic your way out of insecurity uh insecurity is subconscious so for example if you think uh you're ugly you can't logically convince yourself that you're not ugly you have to get you have to convince your subconscious the way I've always done that is with uh, contrasting reference experience. So I used to think I'm too ugly for girls. Uh, I'm a loser, right? But then when I got enough reference experiences of girls who like actually want to date me, uh, you know, uh, who say that, hey, you're so cute, stuff like that. But at a certain point, you kind of tip the scale in the other direction. You're like, wait, well, why am I even thinking this? Like, what about all these experiences, right? You kind of have this little bit of like a transformation type of moment. So that's always kind of been my thoughts on insecurities is if you get enough contrasting reference experiences, uh, then insecurity starts to melt away. I think there are other ways to address it, uh, you know, maybe like hypnotherapy or something along the lines of that, but that's kind of the way that I've always done it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's move on to the next one. This is an interesting question. What was one of the worst cases that James helped turn around and one, into one of his best cases? I mean, I can think of my worst case, but we did not turn him around. <laughs> uh... I'm trying to think of, of, a, of a bad case that like, look, I mean, I've taught many guys who are virgins and, and, you know, like then later on, they weren't virgins. So like I'd say in terms of like the, the, the massive changes that people go through, that's primarily what you would see, but then like, cause it is, it's all, it is all relative. Like you have, a, you have a guy to whom just going and saying hi to a girl is, is like totally changes his, his life. Like, you know, that, like that is the massive thing. And then, okay, you might have something that looks more spectacular. Um, yeah, no, I can't think of any like specific style. Like he was this and now he's married to someone like. Let, let me, let me rephrase the question in a different, somewhat related, somewhat different question. 
Uh, what separates the clients that you have that get really good results from the guys that don't? For example, for me, uh, I think it has to do with your level, whether you're positive or negative and persistence, right? So the clients who have a good attitude and they're like, hey, listen, I'm, I'm going to do the work, you know, like tell me what to do and I'll do it, right? Those typically have radically different outcomes than the guys that are super negative. It's like, oh, it's not even worth it, right? Uh, those guys will typically give up at the first sign of, uh, you know, whatever, uh, of difficulty, right? So do you, do you, have you noticed anything along the lines of that? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, once they leave the workshop, because we do, I mean, we do seven day, usually seven day workshops, we give them plenty of warning of that, that they need to be, they need to be developing their ability to go and approach without a coach there with them, right? Like that's, yeah. that's, because yeah, the, the, I'd say the guys that don't really progress after workshops are the ones that they're, you're walking down the street and they're always waiting for you to pick the girl and to tell you to go, right? Wow. So like I, I tell the guys early in the workshop that you yes of course we're going to tell you to go we're going to push you to talk to girls but the sooner that you can run off and talk to a girl uh without the coach being asked this is where you're actually generating like the ability to self-start so yeah yeah i mean it's it's a, like the guys that try attempt to open attempt to close and then figure out all the stuff in between they're the guys that get good at this it's the, the guys that are trying to become perfectionists and prepare it all in advance never get anywhere yeah, I agree with that. I think some people have a tendency to use coaches as a clutch. So I do a lot of online games, I'm sure you know. And uh, there are guys who like will just every single text, Alex, what should I say here, right? And those guys typically don't really get good because I'm doing all the work for them. And I've learned over time to actually not indulge in that and challenge them to actually do stuff on their own because I'm not doing them any favors by giving them every line and a response to everything, mm -hmm. right? Versus the guys who are like, who are like, hey, I'm going to figure this out on my own. Uh, afterwards, maybe we can review it and you can tell me what went wrong. Those are the guys who have way better results. The guys who are like willing to do things themselves and maybe even take a risk of failing versus the guys who just want you to like handhold them and do everything for them. Like those guys typically struggle a lot. Yeah, because I mean, it's, you know, I've been trying to crack this problem for 15 years of like how to make a guy do the thing that he wants to do. Uh, and it, there is some X factor part of it that can't be taught. Like there's something in there that's just like the good, there's some guys who are just going to get through the beginner's hell because they're not willing to give up. I, I was that, I don't even know why oh, exactly. Uh, and then there are others who just will not commit to this because, you know, as you know, it takes time, it takes six months or so. I mean, it takes about, I don't know, about a year, depending on how much, how well you've been trained, where you came from mm -hmm. to, to get this consistently working so that you know you can get dates this week and you know you can get laid and you know you can get a girlfriend uh and unfortunately most guys never get through the beginner's hell part because it's hard you know the first part the first part sucks when you don't know what you're doing and you're getting rejected all the time it, it sucks um yeah I, I you know i've tried every single angle of, to try and motivate people but it, when i look at the guys after the workshops it's just the guys that just went i am going to do this i'm going mm -hmm. to do this yeah, I, I think you're right. You're, you're, you know, you don't have like infinite ability as a coach, right? Like you, you, there's only so much you can do with the tools you have. I guess the one thing that I found to be probably the most effective is conditioning them. So for example, in our mastermind group, uh, we have, we had a rule or I think we still have this rule is that if you want help with the text, you have to give three suggestions in the comments, right? You have to write out three suggestions and then we will help you. We'll tell you if one of these are yeah. good and none of them are good, but you have to come up with three lines on your own that you could say, right? And that forces people to actually think, right? So conditioning uh, the guys to not, not be over reliant. So I think that's probably like the only thing that I've noticed mm -hmm. that helps. Uh, okay, let's move on to this one. Uh, playing with fire, can you ask James who was the most monumental in his development with respect to game and life? Sure. Um, I mean, in terms of life, the people who are most influential to me were my early martial arts and meditation teachers in China. So, I mean, Shaolin, they were Shaolin monks, really. They had nothing to do with seduction. They were celibate. Uh, but yeah, I mean, those are the, because I didn't really have a father figure, so that they were my father figures for sure. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, when it came to seduction, the guy, you would, no one would know him. So he was my first partner, the first wingman. Uh, still to this day, I think he's the best direct gamer I've ever seen. I've never seen anyone better than him. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so rolling with him early on, like I, I learned a lot about projection of intent and and escalating. Basically, he was extremely good at that. And yeah, yeah like I mean, later on, hanging you know hanging out with with Sasha, like we used to, you know, we rubbed off on each other a lot. Like I got a lot more kind of loose and fun in my game when I was hanging out with Sasha. 
Yeah. The guy that I learned the most from is also a guy no one would know. He was uh, just a private person who taught me a lot. He was my uh, one of my closest college friends. So I feel you on that. What are James' thoughts on NLP? <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, we're always talking to ourselves and the way that we talk to ourselves matters. And so if we can program the way that we talk to ourselves to be more effective, that's good. But my thoughts on NLP is that every person I ever met who's really into NLP is a bit fucking weird. <laughs> my thoughts. Mm. Like, tr like speaking in kind of weird hypnotic language patterns all the time to yourself and to other people, it doesn't sound, it's not really very natural. So... Yeah, I would say, look, look, uh, it's a, it's those are, those can be good tools, of course. Like reframing and, and working on ways that we speak to ourselves. Like in terms of using it as a seduction thing, I never, I could never be fuck trying to f memorize speed seduction scripts or try and do any of that kind of stuff. So I don't particularly, oh. I don't have anything much to say about it from a seduction point of view. But uh, yeah, in terms of like an internal change technology, it's fine. I think there's better ones. Yeah, I generally agree with everything you just said. All right, let's move on to the next one. How does James feel about gaming in lesser known cities in Eastern Europe, such as Kursan? Well, Kursan wouldn't be a good place to game in right now, would it? Because it's in the middle of a fucking war. Um, in general. Like, is he asking about me about gaming in Ukraine in the middle of the war? Or no, no, no. He's, asking, no, no. He's, he's saying like doing cities off the beaten path. So like, for example, in Poland, instead sure. of going to Warsaw, going to like Krakow or something. Right, like that. Yeah, yeah. Those, that's great to do. Like B, B tier cities are great because nobody goes there. Yeah. I find that second tier cities in general are better than first tier cities in most places I've traveled. Even the US. I uh, like first tier. I live in a first tier city, Miami. I've lived in LA. I lived in New York. Uh, none of those cities, when it comes to gay and girls, uh, hold up to something like Albuquerque, New Mexico. Totally random mm -hmm. city. No one ever fucking goes there. No European ever thinks, I'm going to go to Albuquerque. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's why it's a lot easier there because you have like close to no competition. Uh, so yeah. I, in general, I think that second tier cities are quite good. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, the problem is just often not much to do there aside from girls, but yeah. Right. Ask James about meditation, curious to get your views too. Well, I think it's pretty clear that James is a big fan of meditation. So let me rephrase the question. Uh, how many, I guess, how much time do you dedicate to meditation? Do you like, do you do this something you do daily? Do you spend hours doing it? Do you spend minutes doing it? What's like kind of your meditation ritual? Um, I've done, I've done lots of different things with meditation in my life. So I've done a lot of long-term retreats, like 10 day plus retreats. And that's something that I do like I do at least one retreat of some sort a year. So whether it's an, I, I do a lot of shamanic stuff. So I go and do ayahuasca. Um, I've gone and done lots of like movement training camps, martial arts camps, and, uh, and then med meditation retreats. So yes, it, it's, it's part of my practices, but I also like do a lot of micro meditations. So as opposed to like sitting down formally, which I do as, you know, as well, but like, as opposed to that, I tend to take, I don't know, dozens of single minutes in a day to meditate, right? So if I've been working at my desk for too long and I'm a bit fried, then I'll stand up and I'll do 10 breaths of a Qigong set, for example, oh. and then and then I'll move on. Uh, or like I've got a girl coming over and I can feel oh, my body's getting a little bit activated and nervous. Okay, cool. I'll now sit down, do some deeper breathing, do some meditation, focus there. Or, you know, I'm about to go and stand up and teach in front of students and I haven't, and I'm feeling grumpy because I haven't had my coffee yet. Cool. I'll do some meditation there. Uh, so yeah, it's something that I integrate into my day and mm -hmm. which is what I've found to be like kind of, yeah, very practically effective. And that's, that tends to be what I teach guys is how to like meditate without necessarily needing to sit down and do an hour's meditation, which is an awesome thing to do. And, and if you want to go deep, then you do need to do that. Uh, but yeah, taking moments to like literally taking one breath, where I close my eyes and I listen to the sounds around me uh, and I take one big expansive breath and then I bring my awareness back to my center, like that five second thing will have a meditative effect. So I do that kind of stuff many, many times a day. Mm. Yeah, I think meditation is great. I used to meditate regularly. I noticed that uh, this was kind of when I was learning game, that if I was consistently meditating, I would be more calm, less anxious, and typically get like noticeably better results with girls than if I was to take like a week off meditation. Uh, so I think meditation is great. I mean, there's a lot of science behind it. Also, uh, I think now you can use modern technology to enhance your meditation. So there's something called the heart math. Um, 
very heart variability uh, device or whatever. I'm kind of butchering the name, but you guys get the point. It's from Heart Math Institute. Uh, basically, you put it on your ears, you meditate, and it tells you if your uh, heart rate and your breath is in alignment. So that's really cool. There's another tool. It's I forget what's it called, but there's also there, there's various meditation devices that you can use to uh, enhance your meditation and uh like yeah kind of help you i guess like jumpstart your meditation journey so yeah i think meditation is great especially when combined it with modern technology i think it's uh i think it's pretty good um there's no downsides to it that's for sure uh this is okay this is a question a few people are asking what do you think of like using psychedelics to enhance your self-development journey do you think that has any like merit or you think no yes i do think it has merit um not well yes like i've done a lot of i mean especially ayahuasca i've done a lot of it I've done it 50 plus times actually. So, um, yes, the, I mean, for me personally, and for people I've gone on retreats with, there's, we've had massive personal breakthroughs. You don't want to think of it like, it's not like the drug does the job. It's like, it depends on the psychedelic. It depends on the context, the set and the setting. Like I, I would recommend if you're doing psychedelics in order to actually have some kind of breakthroughs to do them in, in actual formal ceremony settings with teachers who know what they're doing and and there's a lot who don't there's a lot of dodgy shamans out there a lot of cowboys um yes absolutely like what a, my experience has been that it's been kind of like an exam for all of my spiritual work right so like mm -hmm. when i've gone into deep trips then i face quite profound battles internal ones emotional ones ones to do with past uh, traumas and so on uh and absolutely getting into especially ayahuasca shamanism like changed me a lot like it really pulled the anger out of me uh it really set me in flow for like months at a time oh wow uh yeah like it just seemed like it did, the correct decisions to make were kind of intuitively obvious uh there i mean there's a lot of profound deep stuff that you can get from particularly shamanic work with ayahuasca uh it's not for everyone i've seen people have horrific ex horrific mm -hmm. experiences really bad experiences uh it's always been pretty kind on me and yeah but for a lot you know it's like you need to be pretty mentally stable like you don't need to be perfect but it's not good to be on meds or to be really emotionally mm -hmm. thrown out when you're doing it you need to find someone that is a good teacher that is actually cares because there's mm -hmm. a lot of people who don't uh and then yes it can have profoundly deep effects for sure yeah, I think you nailed it. Um, I've never tried ayahuasca. I've done like shrooms and acid, but never ayahuasca. But uh, one of my close friends who's done it several times swears by it. He's like, this. he's constantly trying to get me to do it. He's like, dude, this will change your life. So, uh, you know, and this is a person actually, what you're describing kind of uh, mirrors what he said as well. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, well worth it. Okay, fair enough. James, any must-read books? What yes. are your favorite books? Uh, my favorite book is Journey to the End of Journey to the End of the Night by Ferdinand Celine. It's it's an extreme. Like, firstly, what I can tell you is I never read self help books. I hate how to books. I hate them. They're so they're so vapid, empty, and soulless. I don't like whatever the whatever the instruction that they have in that book. You could just read the cliff notes to get the exact how to whatever thing you want to do. Uh, I read literature. I read fiction i read historical novels i read history i read uh travel writings so you know some of my favorite books yeah would be the snow leopard by peter Mathiason and journey to the end of the night by celine ferdinand celine which have nothing to do with pickup <laughs> okay gotcha uh, like, yeah. I, like let, me, let me just let me just wait and make one last point on that. the 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 thing i i if anyone cares i think if you want to become like a very well-rounded man, then don't just read self-help books. Like there is, there is a, there is an entire tradition of, of, of literature dating back thousands of years, which will teach you about humanity, about people, about emotion, about uh, like actual human stuff. And you will gain a lot of seduction ability from that as well. Like just like the habit that men have of only in only consuming information that teaches you how to do a technical thing is such a philistine redundant like tiny amount of what uh the humanity has to offer in my I opinion. kind of agree with you on that i would say for me the books that have been most influential would be the rise of superman uh arnold schwarzenegger's total recall um i would say the winter effect by ian robertson uh, Shantaram, 
Uh, that's a great book. That's a uh, yeah, Shantaram. I loved that was good. Yeah, Shantaram was good. The second one wasn't quite as good, but the first one was great. Uh, the yeah, Game of Thrones good. books. Uh, so yeah, I would say those are the ones for me. I have a video, guys, called Top Five Books. I think there's a few more that I just forget, so check that out. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next question. What's the most important thing you learned in relation to game that you would tell your 20 year old self to save him time, headache, or heartache? You're going to have to accept that some girls are going to like you. Okay. That's like, uh, because that was the thing at the time in my 20s where I was like, God, oh, girls don't like me. And it was just like, just some of them are going to like you, and you're just going to have to accept that. Like that's that's the, that's the thing that would have saved me a lot of heartache and headache was all the worrying, and concern, and fussing about whether I'm attractive or whether a girl's ever going to whatever. Blah, blah, blah. It's just like men, women like men in general. Be one of the men that goes over there and does stuff, and then some of them are going to pick you. Okay, fair enough. Um, can you ask James which app he uses? This he recommending in his program like Headspace, Waking Up. They're talking about meditation apps. All right. Uh, well, no, I don't use any apps. Uh, I created my own meditation product, Marshall Meditation Method, and I have my own ones of those that you can download if you want to buy my meditation. So, no, I do my own stuff. I haven't, I haven't listened to any of those ones, and I'm, I, so I'm not, I can't comment on them. Okay, because gotcha. I, you know, I, I, I learned, I learned meditation in Buddhist temples, basically. Okay, um, I, I want to read this question because this guy super chatted it. Uh, I don't know, maybe he said, James, glad you're on. Your boy Leon rescheduled our initial convo last minute and then blamed on him having chicken bed, didn't ask me a question, not professional, lost trust in the band, please fix. So I guess he's just asking you, like, just to make you aware of that. So just a heads up. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, let's move on. This is an interesting one. James, what's your view on the current dating epidemic? What consequences do you see coming from it? And do you think guys learning games the best solution solving the problem? I think he's talking oh, about he's, the incel epidemic. Yeah, go ahead. He's talking about the which epidemic? The incel epidemic, how there's way more incels now than there were like back in the day. Yeah. I'm not sure if there was. It's, hard, it's kind of quite hard to get data on because maybe it's always been this way. It's just that now they've got a voice. Um, I think that, well, kind of whatever I think is just made based on my guess on demographics. Like I don't necessarily think there's any more or less of a dating epidemic than there was. Uh, so, I mean, what are the consequences coming from it? There's no consequences on, at, at, on society at large. It's like pe people who don't get what they want in life have always existed and they live shittier lives and they have to, they have to deal with the consequences of that. Does it like, is it going to lead to a, an armed revolution by incels? Nope. Is it going to lead to any like major, you know, what, like what, like some social revolution where women are forced to all date like the guy that fits their, you know, that everyone is allocated a female? No, that's not going to happen either. So the only consequences I see is for the individual. So the individual is that, yes, if you're on the wrong side of the dating epidemic, then you need to get on the right side of it. Otherwise, your life's going to suck. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be any kind of insult revolution that's going to happen. I think a more reasonable thing is there's going to be in increase in suicide rate, um, increase in, uh, you know, like men being antisocial, not having friends, right? There's some pretty interesting statistics on that, uh, yeah. that 30 years ago, men had way more close friends than they do now, right? So yeah. it's not only their number of partners is going down, it's also the number of friends, right? So you're Absolutely. kind of seeing that a lot of guys, they don't really have any friends in real life. They spend all the day on the computer, which again is bad for their mental health, hence the, you know, the increase in uh, opiate abuse, right? That's a real issue that's going on, at least in America. And also, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, some of these guys are becoming suicidal, right? Which is also really bad. Uh, so that's kind of like the kind of stuff. Uh, what are some solutions to that? I don't really know. That's a really tough question. Uh, if I was the president, I don't even know what I would do about that. Uh, cause you can't like force women to like have sex with these incels, right? Cause that's not really fair to the women. So like, how do you even address that issue from a macro level? The only way I could see is addressing it from a micro level. So helping yourself not be one of these people, but from a macro level, I wouldn't wait for the government to step in and try to fix the problem because first of all, they don't really give a shit. And second of all, even if they did, there's no real way to fix the problem from a macro level. Like forced monogamy is not going to happen. We're not going to like institute Sharia law in the U S so yeah, it's kind of the only way to approach it is from a micro level is my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And look, yeah, I mean, like the granulation of people's social lives and men being lost and lonely and and atomized, that's a big deal. And I think it's important that men uh, work to create tribes like you need you need a brotherhood around you of at least, you know, two, three, four guys that have your back actually for at least a decade, like real friends that actually have mm -hmm. your back because um, life is fucking hard and lonely without it. 
So no. yeah, that's 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 something that uh, is just as important. Like you know, I've seen this with pickup guys; they only do pickup, only do pickup uh, at the detriment of everything else, um, and that won't sustain you long term. Yeah, I, I agree completely. Um, does James believe in saying out affirmations? No. Okay. You think they just like completely don't work or they're just ineffective or what's your thoughts on that? Saying affirmations, the problem is that if you don't believe the affirmation, then your subconscious will fight against it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're like, you know, I'm so hot or whatever, and you don't really believe that, then uh, you'll be in dissonance with yourself. I think what's better is to go from negative to neutral, right? So if you, so you want to be aware of what is your negative self-talk. And then instead of trying to flip it to being a positive, because you, it's just doesn't, you won't believe it if it's completely the opposite of the reality. So instead you can look at like a, a neutral, a neutral a affirmation, let's say that is acceptable to your subconscious and then you can move on from there. So if you're like, okay, the, the negative one is I'm hideous. No woman's ever going to like me. And mm -hmm. then the other one is like, I'm a golden God and everyone likes me. Okay. Neither is going to work. If it's, if, if you then put it at like, uh, you know, I'm a man doing doing the best I can on this planet, and I'm, a, and I'm going to go and talk to women, and some of them are going to like me. That's an affirmation that I can, you know, just off the top of my head. That works, right? Like it's mm -hmm. functional, it's positive, it's in the positive direction, but it's not delusionally positive. It's something that you'll be able to probably accept and operate from. Yeah, I agree. Becoming agnostic instead of a strong believer. So if like you're like your initial thought is I'm too ugly for women, right? Okay, I, well I don't know if I am or not. I'm mm -hmm. going to suspend disbelief. And I'm just gonna go out there and see what kind of data the world gives me. I think is better. Sure. Have you ever read the book Psycho Cybernetics? Mm -hmm. Okay, I feel like that's another one that would be right up your alley. Uh, the premise of the book is that we all have an inner self image that we carry. I'm grossly oversimplifying, and that you can actually change that image uh, through a form of meditation where you sit there for 20, 30 minutes every day and you visualize yourself being the kind of man you want to be. So the idea is you reprogram your uh, inner self image. Do you think? Uh, do you think there's any merit to anything like that? Sure, totally. But yeah, like I mean, creating like humans have always done that right we have we have images of hero heroic archetypes that we attempt to step into it and they they're, they're models for us uh yeah those those you know those are good things they create structure and a direction for us to move in for sure like they're not real like they're just they're just maps right like the map is not the territory but you can use all sorts of maps that can be effective to navigate somewhere and then you throw the map out when you don't need it anymore okay Cool. Uh, all right, guys, we have gone through all the questions. So if you have any more, get them in now before we wrap up. Uh, but yeah, man, I thought this was a good podcast. I think we covered a lot of good stuff. Uh, do you want to yep. quickly talk about your channel and then the, the new program you have coming out and all that? Sure. So for guys who are interested in me, my YouTube channel is The, the Natural Lifestyles. Currently, I, am op I have an open enrollments for my five-week online sex course. So I run a, an extremely expensive seven-day live sex workshop and i've recently converted that into a digital online version mm -hmm. uh so that is available right now it's five weeks 52 modules with 100 hours of material and it teaches you everything from basically how to take a bra off to give girls multiple squirting orgasms and do crazy anal sex and tantric sex and fantasy role plays and spanking choking rope ties everything everything that you would need to become like a literal sex god so that's what i'm uh doing at the moment Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, check out James's channel. Uh, yeah, I'm not too familiar with this content, but I am familiar with Liam. He's a good dude. Uh, I talked to Alex. He's a good dude. So I would check out their channel. It's good stuff. Show support by subscribing. Uh, there's one last question, actually, this dude has. Uh, I feel like this is a question you and I can both answer. Why do so many PUA gurus go to third world countries to pick up? So you're not actually in a third world country, right? You're in, uh, oh, actually, you're in Brazil. But you spend a lot of your time in like Spain and Barcelona, right? uh i mean i've spent a lot of time in many places no i mean i was well it's not third world let's say developing world i, I lived in budapest in kiev uh so i can answer the question the, an the answer is obvious uh the girls are hotter and you get more leverage yeah i agree with that uh cost of living is uh cheaper uh typically the kind of careers we have we can do it virtually so we don't need to be tied to location uh, again if you can save money put money away every month uh, the girls are hotter uh, you have more leverage um, you know, the culture is cool. 
Uh, you know, like why not? The girls are more feminine. Uh, typically, you know, uh, there's there's a lot of really feminine girls in the U.S., but uh, typically, girls in Colombia or Brazil are going to be more feminine, uh, more traditional. There's literally like no downside to it. You know, if your career allows it, so why would you not? Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, yeah, dude, thanks a lot for coming on. I thought this was a no good discussion. I think we covered a lot of interesting things. Uh, do you have any closing thoughts about anything? No, that's good. Good, good, quick fire rant. Cool. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to stay on guys for another 15 minutes, do a little Q and A that you guys have personally for me. Uh, but yeah, let's thank James for coming on. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was a cool discussion. Thanks bro. All right. All right. Thanks gentlemen. How do I get out of like click something to get out of it? Yeah. Just exit. Yeah. You'll be good. Okay, cool. All right. Thanks guys. Bye, See ya. Have a good night, man. Take it easy. Yeah. I thought this was a good discussion. I think we covered a lot of things. Uh, yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the 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 lay count question. I knew that question was gonna be like so dumb. Like James is like more of like a dude who's like focused on the inner development and like being in the moment, right? To people like that, like the fucking lay count question is super dumb. Even to me, who's not quite up that alley, I think it's kind of dumb. I only like answer that question when people ask me directly. I don't really like like talking about it unless it's directly related. But to like <laughs> someone who's like really focused on self development, it's just like. It's just so dumb. It's something that only like really people and like the small niche focus on. So I knew that, <laughs> but this dude was like literally very determined to get that question out. And so I want to uh, make him happy and uh, yeah, and get that question out. Uh, but yeah, uh, I thought this was a good discussion. Um, I think we covered a lot of good stuff. It's, it's funny that he like, he, he believes a lot of the same stuff I do. He just words it differently, right? But like a lot, like inner game, a lot of the stuff he was talking about, that's why I asked him a lot of clarification and uh, clarifying questions. A lot of the inner game stuff was like things that I teach, I just worded differently, right? Uh, you know, so also like, it's pretty good that he seems like, I was maybe a little concerned that he might be like too like far down the woo-woo train, but it seems like he's very like practical. And you know, he's like, okay, well, this is the inner game, this is the outer game, of course, looks matter, right? So I can definitely respect someone like that. I think he, you know, uh, from what I saw in this, uh, you know, question, he keeps it real. Uh, again, I don't know too much uh, about his, uh, you know, how, about most of his content. I haven't really seen his infield, but um, I have seen the infield of his partner, uh, Liam McRae, or the guy who works with him, and that dude is fucking legit. Uh, so I wish, uh, actually, I've been trying to get Liam McRae on the channel. Uh, I've chatted with him. I have his number, but he said that he's tired of the spotlight. He wants to do the behind the scenes, which is a shame because I really, really, really would love to get that dude on for a podcast. I think he has massive value to offer. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's kind of is what it is. You know, he wants to avoid the spotlight. You know, I can respect that. Okay, let's see what else we have. Yeah, I'll just do like 10, 15 minutes of Q&A and then we'll wrap up. Uh, are you an undead friend enemies or friends or frenemies? I'm so confused about that. Uh, probably frenemies. Um, I don't know. I don't. The only thing I I don't like about him is the fucking the stupid raid he did on my channel. I thought that was uh, kind of like a shitty thing to do. Uh, but the guy's articulate. He's intelligent. Fundamentally disagree with a lot of shit uh, that he says. But um, you know, yeah, I think he's an interesting dude. You know, I don't I don't hate him or something like that. Right. Uh, you know. interview brian from the fearless man i've already interviewed him um at least once if not twice so yeah i've already done that we had a really 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 in-depth good podcast um so uh so chat should expect no more mr slave um i mean i never blocked him from the from the chat uh, you know, he can come on if he wants to, but in terms of like having him on the panel, I will not have him on unless it's like really, really relevant. And again, I just feel like he derails the show. He doesn't act any value. Like at first it was really funny. It's like, oh, this dude is like so fucking crazy. It's kind of like, you know, laugh at him type of thing. Uh, but then it just, I feel like it's gotten really old. Like I find myself getting really bored of all his shit. And I've noticed a lot of guys in the chat are getting bored. All my friends who, you know, who watch my stuff tell me like it's getting really boring. So I think everyone collectively is just getting really tired of his uh, shenanigans. I think it's just getting like really fucking old. So yeah, he's not blocked from my channel. Uh, you know, he come on. Uh, and if there's a real reason, like there's like an important reason, I will, you know, I will potentially invite him on, but it's not going to be like a regular thing. Yeah. You know? um, so yeah. 
I don't want to derail the quality of the uh, show for one person. Alex, what do you think about Erudite? Casting a white net, including high body count girls. I think she overlooked that you can be compatible more than one woman, one that didn't have a past. I think the point she was getting at is that a lot of guys, they don't even have the luxury of being ultra picky because they have no options coming in, right? So it's like, you're like a virgin incel and you're like ultra, you have like 20 million criteria. And it's like, dude, you don't have that luxury. It's like, uh, it's like fucking <laughs> Ganstar turning down jobs because like, I don't really like that they only offer two weeks vacation. I really want three weeks vacation. You know, it's like that type of thing. It's like you don't really have the luxury of doing that. That's the point they made. The more, you know, the better you are with women, the more girls you have coming in your life, the picker you can be. Uh, me personally, I never obsessed about I have like mixed feelings on the on the body count thing because if I look back, every single girl I've dated has had a lower body count. Uh all except one were in single digits and the one that was not in single digits was like maybe like 12 or 13 when i met her so actually no sorry she was yeah so something along the lines of that she was like maybe 10 or 11 when i met her right so i've traditionally always dated girls with low body count but that doesn't mean i'm not i'm not screening for that necessarily i'm screening for the things that i focus on which is um reliability uh like good morals values honesty i think that like for example for girl it's just more of a correlation thing, right? But theoretically, is it possible? Like, look, if the girl has 200 body count and she does, she's not, you know, like a porn star involved in like sex work, yeah, like something is off. She's probably highly driven by novelty and she's not going to make a good long-term partner. Uh, however, uh, if you're looking at a girl who has, uh, wait, guys, hold up one second. Uh so if you have a, uh, you know, if, if the girl's, you know, so, so yeah, if she's highly driven by novelty, she's not going to be a good partner. But I think guys become like too OCD about, I do think there's better metrics than body count. Uh, again, some of the ones I mentioned, again, I personally, I don't OCD about it. Uh, first of all, most girls have a lower body, have a body count in the single digits. It's a majority of girls. Uh, but if you're like, if you think that there's like, for example, you meet two girls, one of them has a body count of three, the other one has a body count of six. And you're like, I need to go with a three one, right? I think that's kind of silly. So that's kind of my, uh, thoughts on that. You aim third world countries easier. So some of the same PA techniques use there for first world countries and right. Uh, yeah, I live in, I live in Miami. I've spent most of my life in America. All the stuff I developed is, uh, in America. So I don't know who that's referring to, but certainly not me. Are you debating President Sunday? Yes, I'm debating him on Tuesday. That should be quite fun. Why are you ignoring me about good looking loser? Uh, because your question is really dumb. This is a highly, highly requested interview. I I haven't seen any evidence that good looking loser is a scammer. So if you want to show me something, that's a different discussion. Uh, why do I want to have him on? Well, frankly, because he's one of the OGs of the community and something that my audience wants. I don't really give a shit if you think he's a scammer, unless you can show me some kind of evidence. Do you do direct trap work or do they grow based off other lifts? They grow uh, based off other lifts. I don't do any kind of direct uh trap training because my traps are already predominantly large uh typically though that's mainly side effect of trt so when you get on testosterone uh your traps and your delts are the muscles that have the most um uh, whatever receptors so they're naturally going to grow the most James definitely doesn't like Alex. <laughs> I don't think he doesn't like me. I think he was maybe he was tired. It's a little bit later where he is. I also moved the podcast back on him because I was running late. So we're supposed to do eight uh, eight o'clock this time. And then I was like, oh, can we do 830 and then 840? So maybe he was just tired. I don't know. We, we don't have any kind of like personal vendetta or anything like that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's theoretically possible, but I don't see why he would want to do the stream if he didn't like me. You know, I think he's probably just tired or something like that. Or maybe he's just had a big day. Okay, let's see what other questions we have. I'm just I'm just skeptical about the girls stay loyal to me. Most of the girls with high body counts won't. In, in terms, if you're speaking generalities, you're right. You have a better chance of a girl who has a body count of three staying loyal to you than a girl who has a body count of twenty, uh, right? Uh, but I think you guys just obsess about it way too much and they make it like the most primarily metric that they look at, right? Which I think there's more important metrics you can look at. A girl who's a virgin can also be unloyal to you, right? We're just talking about averages. So yeah, like, you know, look, 
me personally, meet a girl and I mean, I'm in a relationship. Let's say I was single. I meet a girl and her body counts like 50, right? You know, like, yeah, that would definitely give me a massive pause. Like I would want to explore why her body count is so high uh, because having sex with a lot of random men isn't typically a female's uh, sex strategy or dating strategy. Typically what girls do uh, who have a high sex drive is they get a few fuck buddies, right? Because uh, typically for a girl to meet up with a new guy, there's a risk of, uh, you know, sexually transmitted disease, pregnancy, and also violence, right? Like the guy could be crazy. So uh, typically, you know, a girl's MO isn't to fuck like a hundred different dudes is to get two or three fuck buddies and have a lot of sex with them. So yeah, I would explore that. But yeah, yeah, I think guys, uh, overdo it when it comes to the body count thing. I think that's just about a little bit too much. I give you a ton of evidence on one comment the UMP and QI live show applying to your main comment. Dude, I don't remember one random comment that you made on a different stream. Uh, you can tell me now, uh, or you can forever hold your peace, my man. Um, you had many great experiences just after curiosity. What do you think the highlight of your life going to be your one best moment? Um, I wouldn't say I had a particularly like great life. Uh, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that I struggled with, with uh, primarily uh, Lyme disease. I've had a lot of health issues growing up. Uh, you know, I wasn't out, you know, I was really bad with women. Uh, you know, I got, I wouldn't say I was bullied, but I got made fun of a lot in middle school. I was an immigrant to America who didn't really speak the language. So I've had a lot of hardships. Now, of course, I do have some advantages. I come from a very loving family who really cared about me and, you know, try to help me in every way they can. I have a great relationship with my parents. Uh, you know, I have a great group of friends now. Uh, so, you know, I'm probably slightly above average looking. I don't have any deformities. I'm above average intelligence. Uh, you know, so I'm fairly charismatic and funny. So I have some advantages and disadvantages. But I think the biggest highlight of my life uh, so far, I would say is probably when I traveled to Israel, I spent a month backpacking around Israel. That was like the happiest I've ever been, just that month where I spent just back, backing around Israel. That was so much fun. Uh, in terms of more recently, I like flow state activities. I like anything that sucks me into the moment. So like really intense debates I've had where I've had to like really focus. Uh, you know, like honestly, just one moment that like I felt like just a lot of joy is when I received my YouTube 100K trophy. It sounds kind of like a little bit artificial, but it was just like, because I've been working at it for so long, it was just like, yes, I finally did it. I just remember when I got the, uh, the, the whatever, the 100K thing, I just remember feeling there's like so much joy and pride in my brain. So yeah, no, it's a, it's a really tough question to answer. Alex, would you bring back Andy from Kill Your News to talk about sex and BSM and relationships? I'm really binging this contest. Uh, yeah, for sure. I like Andy a lot. Uh, he's always welcome to my channel. Um, but, um, yeah, I think we'll hopefully do, uh, another one of those, uh, streams where it's all four of us are more open panels happening soon. Uh, yeah, we'll do one, uh, probably Tuesday after the present day Sunday thing. I'm thinking question, how persistent should you be with a girl to get on a date, double, triple text, et cetera. Um, yeah, I think you should be fairly persistent, you know? I think the only thing that prevents guys from being persistent is their ego. Uh, but I think you're going to get way better results with women if you can take your ego aside. Um, I'll double, triple text. You'll see my later reports where, you know, it's, uh, like I'll, I'll be very persistent. And typically the hottest girls, the hottest girls I've hooked up with from dating apps, I have to be more persistent with. It's pretty rare that I get like a really hot girl from a dating app that was just like kind of fell into my lap. That's more like sixes. But for like the eights and nines, potentially, those are the ones where I had to be really persistent over and over and over. Would you say BMAC versus Ron gave a dub to the black pill? Would you say BMAC's game was weak? I'd say BMAC, again, it's like, look, obviously Ron is better looking than BMAC. Uh, but also it's obvious that Ron's social skills are way less cringe. So how much did was it the looks and how much of it was the social skills like who knows but his game was really cringe so i think that played uh, a substantial role in his lack of results i wish julian black blank would pod with playing with fire i know that would be like my top 10 maybe not top 10 top 20 uh interviews uh yeah i reached out to him and he responded and he said that um he, he was very polite, but he said that he's not doing any more dating streams. So I was like, okay, well, I'll, well let's avoid dating. We'll talk about self-development. He never responded. So I don't know, man. Kind of is what it is. Alex, you have uh, 
such a great work ethic. Thanks. I really appreciate that. Michelle, what's your uh, email? I'll send you the full story. Playing with fire channel at gmail.com. All one word. <laughs> Quite a strong. Can we get some more dating coach advice from BMAC so we know what not to do? <laughs> I think BMAC is <laughs> done with PWF. Can you explain that about the ego stopping men from being persistent? Yeah, sure. So it's like there's a girl you like, right? You text her. She doesn't respond. And you're like, yo, I should just re-engage her, right? That's the practical thing to do. But you're like, well, whatever. This bit, your, your ego is like, well, fuck her, you know? Uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I, why, would I, why would I lower myself? Guys often say double texting is like you're lowering yourself. Like, come on, don't you have some self-respect when you double text a girl? Why? Like, how does that in any way affect your self-respect, right? I come from a sales background, so I look at everything very pragmatically. I tend to not to look at things idealistically. And I think looking at dating in a very idealistic lens is pure silliness. I try to be much heavier on the pragmatic side. And when I was doing sales, right, again, like, you have to be really persistent sometimes to get sales. Like, we had quotas we had to hit. We had sales competitions. Uh, you know, I'm fairly competitive. And again, I had to be very pragmatic with sales techniques. And well, the biggest one was being really, really persistent. That's what I was actually known for at my company. Uh, we would, it's, I want to try to explain this without going too much of a backstory, but basically we had like a company database, right? Of all the leads that various salespeople had and didn't work out with. So for example, um, you get a client's phone number, but then they drop off. What I would literally do is I would spend like sometimes two, three hours right after a company meeting, just going through all the leads that other people gave up on. And I would turn some of them around. Like some of these people would be like, no, no, I'm not interested. They'd be like, okay, well, let me just ask you one quick question. And then two hours later, we have an appointment set up and next day, you know, I made a sale, right? So that's kind of what I was known for in my company was just being really, really persistent, right? If a customer told me no, that didn't really discourage me. I would be, as long as they were qualified customer, I would persist. I'd be like, okay, cool. Well, is that because you think that you can't afford solar or what's the issue, right? You see what I'm doing? I'm hitting them with takeaway. They're like, no, 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 I can afford it. it, it, it it's not bad. I'd be like, okay, well, is it that uh, you feel your roof is too small? No, no, my roof isn't too small. Well, what's the issue? It seems like you're a perfect candidate. Well, it's actually, and then they give you their objection, right? So I think persistence is a great thing. It wow. definitely gets you what you want in life. What's your favorite day of lifts, back, chest, arms, or legs? I fucking hate legs. My favorite is first place is probably chest. Second place is back. Alex, if I saw my Tinder comments to your email, would you do a page-by-page -page review of them like in your older videos? Um, I can't make any promises, but if the conversation is interesting and I think there's a video in it, then I will 100% do that. Um, send it to me. I'll take a look. If I think it's interesting for a video, I'll do a video on it. If not, you can always post in the PWF forums. I do take a look at those uh, periodically. Uh, what do you think about Coach Kyle's game? Um, I think it's good. I like Coach Kyle. Uh, how good Jim Maxing for online dating shows pick make a difference? They absolutely do make a difference. The uh, I, I tend to reference the OK Cupid study a lot, which is very interesting because it's like really good scientific data, even though it is a little bit old, but I don't think this stuff really substantially changed. They found that first place, the most effective photo for online dating is a dog photo. Second place, like literally like slightly below a, sh uh, a dog photo was a shirtless photo, but provided you're in good shape. Everything else like travel photos or social photos were like significantly lower. So going off that in my anecdotal experience, I think that shirtless photos, if you're in good shape, can definitely make a big, big difference. Has BMAC finally given Ron Ron the bell bot? No, he has not. He has completely uh, disappeared. I don't know. And honestly, I don't fucking care about that guy. Fucking loser. Doesn't her girl disqualify because she's not safe? She's flaked or not respond to text sometimes. Yeah, so I think obviously you have to use common sense here. But uh, just because a girl didn't respond to your text doesn't necessarily mean she's not interested. Of course, it could be that. But there's also a plethora of other things it could be. Maybe her text didn't go through. That happens to me sometimes. Maybe she texted the wrong person. Maybe she just forgot to respond. Maybe she was just doing some shit and she forgot to respond. Hot girls are getting hit up by tons and tons of guys. Sometimes they just forget, right? So there could be any number of reasons why she didn't respond. Have you checked out any uh, text Scott's videos? I have not, no.
Bro, I added a douchey shirtless photo in my matches 10x. I'm in that good shape. Yep, for sure. That's not free speech. That's harassment. Uh, what are you referencing towards? Imagine being for cancel culture, L. What? 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 Can someone explain to me what the fuck uh, you guys are referring to when you say imagine being for cancel culture? Like, who's for cancel culture? Certainly not me. Oh, you're talking about, are you talking about BMAC? Is that, is that what the conversation in the chat is about? Alex, what's with the wife beater? LOL. Uh, I don't know. I just <laughs> wore it today because uh, that's what I was wearing. And then uh, I came, I uh, hit a lot of traffic on my way home. Uh, I had to run some errands, so I didn't have time to change. Yeah. Uh, we'll go for like five more minutes and then we'll wrap up. Uh, what's the best way uh, to get good at conversational skills? Uh, practice, 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 and then get expert feedback by uh, videotaping yourself or at least audio recording yourself and uh, either asking a coach or asking a friend who knows what they're doing. Uh, that's how I got good. Uh, it was just repeatedly asking i never actually done any kind of coaching program but i did uh i have friends who are better than me and i consistently ask them for feedback it really speaks up uh speeds up the uh learning curl uh curve i found that oftentimes if your message would get lost in the flood of dms double texting will bring your message back to the top of the notification list and get her attention again yeah I have quite a few friends who are like not really in the pickup community. Like they know about it because of me, but they're like not super immersed in it. They're just guys who are like good with girls, right? I also have friends who are not good with girls. But if I'm looking off the guys who I'm friends with who get lead a lot, uh, none of them are afraid to be persistent. None of them are afraid to double text the girl, right? And to them, if you say like, oh, dude, but isn't that like kind of cringy? Like, dude, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> I want to get laid. I don't care about what some random dude on the internet thinks about my texting. So, yeah, I don't know. I think like, I think it's good to have like natural friends outside this community because it can really provide you with perspective. Like I have quite a few of those, right? And I think that like really, like sometimes you kind of get like, this community just becomes a circle jerk and a lot of mental masturbation. So I think sometimes it's good to take yourself outside of these communities. Question, can we get Mr. Slave and BMAC in a debate and not hit record? <laughs> Definitely not uh, having Mr. Slave on for a debate with BMAC. Uh, I think that would be uh, kind of uh, – I don't think either one of them would do it. And, uh, yeah, not a fan of that idea. Playing fire, that kid thinks Undead should be canceled. Oh, yeah, I don't think anyone should be canceled unless they're doing something that's, like, grossly inappropriate, which, you know, um, Undead is not as far as I know. But I don't really know too much of his contest content. How do you recommend uh, handling girls you're planning a date with weeks from now saying that's things like, how's your date going? I, I'm assuming you mean, how's your date going one night? And then today she's like, okay, well, enjoy cupcaking with your boo. Uh, probably would not use that phrasing <laughs> or that line. But uh, yeah, so girls who I'm handling, plan so let's say I schedule a date with a girl a week from now. I'm going to text her, you know, uh, two days later after I set up the date and be like, um, send her like a funny meme, like a Ryan Gosling meme or something like that. And she's like, ha ha, that's so cute. Be like, yeah, how's your day going? She's like, oh, good, blah, blah, blah. Be like, oh, cool, me too. And send her like some DHV text and then just have like a little bit of playful report back and forth. Keep it light. You don't have to overdo it. But having a little bit of rapport, I think is good. Would you let winners from Keys to the AP come on your panel talk about their, yeah, hundred percent I would, of course. Is Duke never coming back on your channel? No, I think he'll come back at some point. I was on his channel like two weeks ago or a week ago. So we're cool. We don't have any kind of personal issue. Um, yeah, I think he was just maybe discouraged by some of the reaction he got in the chat, which is something, honestly, I've started to see more and more uh, content creators saying, dude, Alex, I really like you. I fuck with you, but uh, I don't want to go in the chat anymore because of your chat. So that's why I'm kind of... I'm going to be taking some steps to uh, – not severe steps. We're still going to keep a largely pro-free speech policy, but to kind of curb the amount of negativity and hate and trolling we see in the chat. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be 
you know, very progressively trying to uh, change that. Uh, we're still going to largely, largely, like predominantly be pro free speech. But if someone is like, all they're doing is like giving people hate about things not related to the discussion. So like, if we're having like a, if I'm having a discussion with Erudite about like, I don't know, like fucking the importance of uh, like social circle and this one dude is all they're saying is Kyla is a slut. She's been with 20 guys. Nick is a cuck, right? Like if you're repeatedly doing that, we'll give you a warning first. But if you ignore that warning, we'll put you in a five minute timeout and that sort of thing. I think we need to uh, kind of, we've gone too far in one direction. Uh, you know, again, I love free speech, but some people abuse it and that's the issue. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes, but we do need to, Make sure the chat stays a predominantly uh, constructive environment. It doesn't have to be positive. You can definitely criticize, critique, uh, even call things out. You know, you're like, hey, Alex, I'm going to call you out on that. Totally fine, right? Uh, but if all you're doing is just instigating and being a negative little bitch, that's a little bit of a different story. Question, how do you deal with girls who text you with accusing you because of buyer's remorse after making out like crazy on a date? Uh, well, typically you don't really have that problem if you have sex with a girl. I've only ever had that with girls who I didn't close. I've had girls like I made out with and then like it's going really well. We set up a second date and she texts me like, yeah, you just want sex. It's like, what are you talking about? Uh, but if you actually have sex with a girl, it typically doesn't happen. Do you recommend <laughs> BMAC for coach? Uh, I think uh, I'll let my videos speak for themselves. Um, question after date is set, how do you deal with girls sending naked pics before the date? Um, that's a good thing. I would say, I would say, Ooh, I can't wait to uh, spank that booty or something like that. I would just reward that behavior. Did you run, uh, any gear before TRT? Uh, nope. I, I did not. How about uh, after the second warning, you have to come on debate or get put in timeout? Ooh, I actually really, really like that idea. Yeah, there's there's a lot of dudes who like will talk massive shit in the chat, but they never want to come on for a debate. Uh, so I think that's actually a good idea. If you're really, really opinionated and you really hate me or one of my guests, then come on on the channel. Uh, let's have a discussion. Let's have a debate and let's hash it out instead of just like fucking trolling the chat. I like that idea. Question, does penis size matter? What can you do to increase size? Uh, well, I have like a humongous schlong, so obviously I can't relate to that. No, I mean, of course it matters to some extent, but typically by the time the girl sees your penis, she's already committed to having sex with you. So uh, it could affect your retention. I don't know if it's going to affect your like initial closing, uh, unless you have a micro penis. If you have a micro penis, like I'm really sorry, that fucking sucks. Uh, you know, that's, that's rough. You got dealt a bad hand in life, but as long as it's like your penis is like average ish, I think it's like, you know, I think guys care about it more than girls do generally, but obviously if you got, if you're lucky to have a big penis, that's like, that's a good thing, but you can't really, in terms of changing your penis size, this is an area I really know nothing about. I know that, uh, what's his name? <sighs> Sterling Cooper has a lot of content about that. So maybe check him out, but I personally don't really know much about that. Can we please, as a community, ignore Ganstar? He's a fine soul, financially celibate. His <laughs> fine soul. Um, yeah. Yeah, the only thing I want to discuss with uh, Ganstar is the details of the competition. Anything aside from the competition, I don't really give a shit about. He challenged the MP to a uh, competition, and the MP accepted. Uh, that's, uh, that should be the, uh, the only thing we have left to discuss is the logistics of it. And uh, until he's ready to do that, I don't really have much to talk to him about. I'm not gonna like ban ban him from the channel or anything, but if he like he does like what I don't like that he does is like the fucking spamming and like self promoting. So uh, the way it works with YouTubers is you typically clear self promoting behavior with the content creator before doing it, right? So people will ask me like, "Hey, it's okay if I promote this?" I'll be like, "Yeah, sure." Or like, "No, I don't feel comfortable with that," right? Uh, but if he's gonna think he's gonna self promote his shitty channel uh, in my comments repeatedly, like, no, I'm not gonna allow that. Um, yeah, I know you do, Stefan. Yeah, I'm not accusing you of that. Yeah, what other questions?
Andy, uh, an, uh, kill your new loser, and Austin recommended the bath made for increasing size. Yeah, never tried it, so don't really know, but mm, could work. How do you get so good at debating skills? I don't actually think I'm that good. I think I'm better at like uh, picking up girls, and I'm at debating. I think I'm still fairly new to debating. I've only been doing it for like a year now. Um, just practice and learning, uh, getting feedback from people who are better at debating than me and uh, taking their feedback into account, really. I did, uh, when I first started learning debating, I had Ask Yourself, who's a good, really good debater, uh, gave me private lessons uh, and gave me a lot of feedback, and that's really helped expedite the curve. That's really how you get good at anything. It's just learning from someone, having someone who's better than you review your work and give you tips. Alex, will you ever move from Miami? It's theoretically possible, but I'm a uh, I'm quite happy here. My girlfriend's here, all my friends are here, uh, my physical therapist is here. Like everything that I like is here, so I have zero desire to move anytime in the near future. Let's trade on that chronic stream. No, let's not do that. I don't think two wrongs make a right. Uh, I don't see the point of doing that. So let's respectively not do that. But I appreciate the thought. Would you ever get train wreck for debate podcast? I've honestly never heard of this person, so I'd have to look into them. Um, what are your thoughts of necklaces and fake tattoos and fake piercings to get delay? Uh, I don't know. I've never done fake tattoos or necklaces or fake piercings. I have real tattoos. I think real tattoos can be helpful, but if you really don't like tattoos, then don't get it. Don't force yourself just for the sake of getting laid. I genuinely like tattoos. So that's why, you know, I have several tattoos. Um, I don't know. I feel like you'd get called out on that. Like, I think the girl might realize that it's like obvious. I don't know if it's like really, really realistic looking, then perhaps you can pull it off. But this is like not really my expertise. What do you think of, uh, destiny drip on no jump or berserk Alex? Oh, I haven't seen it yet, but I do want to check it out. You're good at debating, though, to be honest. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. What business philosophy do you listen to? It's kind of a combination of my own. Uh, I believe in uh, inspiring loyalty through uh, positivity and treating people well. So the people that work for PWF, there's there's several people who work for our company behind the scenes. They've been here for ages, most of them at least. One new guy we brought in, but most people have been here from the start. Um, I treat them well. I give them a share of the profit that we make. Uh, you know, I try to be understandable if they're going on vacation and stuff like that, as long as they're still performing their work. So um, that's why I think uh, it's good to inspire loyalty, uh, you know, rather than having like a high turnover rate where you're constantly burning through people. Um, I think you should treat people well and also lead by example, while at the same time uh, having strong boundaries and being very clear about what's expected. I've never once yelled at any of my employees or even raised my voice. Uh, you know, we'd just be like, hey, man, listen, I noticed that lately uh, you haven't done this. Uh, is something going on? Because I think it's really important that you do this. That's how I would communicate. Would you do uh, live texting like Lindbergh does? Um, yeah, for sure. I could. Um, Alex, if they were on a dirt cheap plane ticket, would you fly against Jeff? It was under 350. Uh, no, I wouldn't do anything nice for him. Again, I fucking really don't like the dude. Uh, especially because he's insulted my girlfriend multiple times. He just obsessively tries to start drama in my channel. So, no, I wouldn't do anything for him. I would totally do the competition, but I wouldn't even fucking give him $5. Alex, would you ever fly out to San Diego for a weekend? I know you used to live in LA, but San Diego's a good vacation spot. Thanks a lot. Do some tricks there. Yeah, I've been to San Diego many, many, many times. Uh, San Diego's cool, uh, but I would need a strong reason to go there, like a podcast, a big podcast or something like that. Uh, have you ever seen Fidelgi RTC's? Uh, no, I'm not familiar with that at all, honestly. Okay, let's see what other last questions we have. What do you think has the best online game or PA course right now? I mean, obviously, I'm heavily biased because I think that I, I believe my shit is the best. I, I'm just being genuine. That's what I feel. But also, to be fair, I have not seen a lot of like people's works. Like, I've never seen James Marshall's product. I've never seen like, you know, like most of the coaches, Coach Kyle's product. So it's like, it's not really, I can't really properly value it. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be like heavily biased, but there's this website 
I forget the name off the top of my head. It's on our it's on our sales page that does reviews. And they uh, wrote a review of us. Actually, they uh, you know they they asked us, hey, can you give us a free login? We want to do a review, uh, you know, uh, but we're gonna keep it real, you know. I'm like, yeah, sure, that's fine. I have nothing to hide. They did a review. They gave some good feedback. We had some minor technical issues that we addressed after the review, but the review was largely, largely, largely positive. So that's like I think a better source is like third party sources. Uh, what is the best way to get learned helplessness and being lazy? Oh man, uh, discipline and conditioning, right? So conditioning yourself through conscious willpower to, uh, work hard, you know, I think is, uh, I'm kind of giving you a really short version of the explanation, but yeah, that's basically the gist of it. Uh, would you ever want a harem? Um, I mean, I've had harems. I've had like, you know, rotation of fuck buddies, but at this point in time, no, I'm like quite content with having a girlfriend who I spend most of my time with and occasionally having sex with new chicks. That's kind of like what I enjoy. Uh, I'd rather spend the rest of the time like focusing because when I had like a rotation, it was like really, really time consuming. And nowadays I'd rather focus more of my time on the business and also spending time with family and friends. Best place to for single guy, um, yeah, it's going to be a second tier city like Tampa or St. Petersburg. Probably Tampa will be the best one out of this bunch. How much is James product? I honestly have no idea. Who else do you want for value pods? Oh man, that's a good question. More plates, more dates. Certainly, Andy from Kill Your Inner Loser, uh, Julian Blanc. Um, Maybe Neil Strauss. Those are the ones at the top of my head, but I'm sure there's a few more. What's one country in South America that's best traveled to for a weekend vacation? I've only ever been to Colombia and South America. Colombia is great. Medellin, one country that's best to live long term. Um, really just depends on what you want, but a lot of people from America tend to live in Medellin, so that could be one. You should get uh, AMS uh, on a stream. Yeah, I've invited him many times. I think he's wrong about a lot of things, but it would be an interesting discussion. But uh, yeah, I, he has never responded. So yeah. uh, Ganster, once again, no self promoting or shitty channel online. This dude's like literally in every single one of my stream trying to self promote. Uh, so don't do that. Uh, Alex, do you invest? uh trade stocks to make profit i do not no i lost 15k in crypto and now i'm just keeping my money very safe in the savings account with one percent return probably not the optimal strategy but yeah i'm just gonna i'm very like i'm very like risk takey with like approaching and some elements of my life but i'm very conservative with like financial things honestly question what is the least preferred ethnic group for dating i would say probably indian people can you check out if you can get sex coach on stream? I have many times. There was that chick with the short hair, the blonde chick, who's a sex coach that came on. I've had, um, what's his name? Uh, Andrew Miak on. So I've, I've had quite a few sex coaches on. Anthony Eugene Johnson. He's been on my channel several times. He's been on here before. Will you hash out your differences with the Gantstar tonight? I don't think we're going to be able to solve it over one conversation, nor do I particularly... Uh, give a shit about talking to him unless he's uh, ready to come to Miami and we're talking about logistics. When do you think uh, you'll hit 500k subs? Uh, I mean, it could be could be in six months, could be in a year, could be in two years, could be in five years. It just really depends, you know. Like you just you just don't know with this stuff. So I really don't know. I wish I was soon, but you know, I'm just grinding it out and we'll have to go with uh what happens you know i'll email i've emailed you the full story about scammer good looking loser okay scorpion is it is there some private information there or do you mind if i share this on stream we can go through it right now uh just let me know if you're cool with me sharing this on stream what's your least preferred race to date playing with fire probably indian girls i'm just generally i've hooked up with a few indian girls but they were like very like white looking I'm generally not attracted to indian girls that much 
Any good books other than Kama Sutra for sex advice? Yes. Uh, my favorite book on that is called The Sex God Method by Daniel Rose. I would definitely, definitely check that out. What app help you stay productive on your business? I actually don't use any apps for that. I just use a simple notepad where I like write things down. Any good hustles, part-time jobs to get girls? Obviously, the first one that comes to mind uh, is, uh, what's it called? Oh, fuck. Um, oh, being a promoter. Are you going to prioritize quality content or getting more subs? Um, I try to do both. So I think that I do quality content. I just do a variety of contests. I do some value stuff, some drama, some like mixed type of things. So I try to do a variety of uh, content. So, you know, you guys don't get bored. And so that all my subscribers have something that, you know, appeals to them. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to do like bullshit stuff to like get more subs. Like I could easily set up like a fake fight with Natty right and make it like really crazy and then like that will get a shitload of views i could do some bullshit thing where i like invite a bunch of girls over and kick them out so there's things i could do they'll get more views that i'm not willing to do Gan start if you back down to any mp's challenge and everyone will lose the respect for you indeed indeed Uh, thoughts on living your home to save money versus uh, but limited versus risking financially, but more freedom really comes down to your circumstances, what your goals are, what your situation is like. It just really, really depends. Do you think that um, what is shown in your videos about text game can be applied in Spain? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as long as you translate your text into Spanish. Yeah, I don't see why not. The culture is not that different. It's a Western country. Okay. I'm going to do another one minute, see if there's any last questions, and we'll wrap up. Uh, we're probably going to take tomorrow off, but maybe not. Maybe we'll do something tomorrow. Uh, you should stream to multiple platforms, including TikTok. Is there a reason why I'm doing that? I am doing that. I stream to – I. I, uh, I post daily videos on TikTok. On TikTok, I have more subscribers than I even do on here. On TikTok, I have like 170,000 subscribers. I get like 30,000 views per video. Uh, so I'm more popular on TikTok than YouTube, honestly. And I, I stream to Twitch. So, yeah, I already do that. Uh, can you explain the course and services you offer briefly? Yeah, sure. So I have a product. Um, the ultimate dating blueprint 2.0 it's like every single thing i know about getting girls and then 20 million other things we have like a bunch of uh you know like um i had a bunch of people help me with it like a fitness trainer right uh right um what's it called a thing about like body training how to like get jack and uh fashion stylist talk about fashion right stuff like that so it's really in depth if you guys think i'm like really detailed uh, in my videos, the free videos, I took it like 20 levels further in the product. And then if you get the product, you are allowed to join our mastermind group, uh, which is $49 a month. Not too bad where you get one-on-one -on -one help. You don't have to, of course, but it's, it's an option. And, uh, I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but with that, uh, I sometimes like, I don't know, like I'm, yeah, I'm more interested in like just basically promoting my product and the mastermind group rather than the coaching, but I'll, I'll do it. If, I, if a person really wants one-on-one -on -one coaching, I'll do it for them. Well, I'm asking you, is it okay if I read the email publicly? You have to answer my question first. If you have some personal info on there, I don't want to dox you. Uh, no, I think there's a zero chance that BMAC is a, uh, is a god coach. Are you able to uh, make money off TikTok views? Uh, no, I don't make any money off TikTok. Question, can I get free login to your course so I can review it? <laughs> nice try, but no. Uh, yeah, I can't. Uh, yeah, like that was only – dude, he had a legit website. I've seen him review other courses, but that was like a one-time exception. I don't do that like typically, but yeah, uh, I guess it was a good attempt. Uh, okay. Okay, let's end this off by reading Scorpion Surte's epic, uh, I guess, analysis of why – uh, what's his name? Good looking losers and scammer. Okay. 
Okay, let's take a look. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, there we go. One particular video he made of approaching girls in the park, he approached around six to eight girls and got four or five numbers that seemed to be pretty good. All the girls happen to be well above average and sitting in benches alone, but not that many people around. Somebody did a face analysis and found that they were doing a beauty pageant that day near the park. The thing is all of them gave different reasons for being in the park, such as I was jogging and different names. He also lied about the location of the park. Um, okay, as soon as that video came out, good looking, loser immediately took down his own video and shortly after the expose video got removed then good looking never made any more infield videos never trust what happened and left youtube completely for seven years unfortunately the video cannot be found anymore but i can give you some evidence that what i'm saying is 100 true and the exposed video existed containing solid evidence here's talking about the exposed video all the bottom of this article photo proof all the girls were models uh okay let's change gears and share the other one I feel like this is like kind of dumb, but let's take a look. Uh, okay. This good loser from Steps and Community has a game experience. For me, this instructor thing is bullshit. Go out with a friend, learn with him, but paying a stretch is super wide because it's not shortcuts. You can learn something. Uh, when I see the men are 35 going out with 24 old structures, learn game. Okay, I want to get to one of these structures I've been asked for is good looking loser. Before continuing, let me talk to you about some tricks. So, in order to become good, so what do folks do when instructor go out and infield with some girls? You know, find girls who knows and just pull out. And this is not only a trick. I learned from a good-looking video he made about bodybuilding on black and white videos. I learned black and say that I thought he was legit serious. Below you see some snapshots, some of his videos where he did some approaches. The original images file would delete from WordPress due to requests from good-looking lower. Uh, okay, this part is probably the most damning thing I've seen, uh, but not necessarily indicative of fraud. The images in the footage and the post were used for criticism, commentary, and education protect by fair use law. Uh, I like the natural and fashion look. Uh, Model mayhem. Uh, I don't really see what this is proving. Uh, but how does this prove that the girls were fake? I don't see how this, what, because they're on a beauty pandemic website? Uh, I don't know what this proves or doesn't prove. Uh, also, honestly, I don't really care that much about what Good Looking Loser did like fucking 10 years ago. Uh, it's, it's a highly requested interview. I have some questions for him as well. Um, so yeah, I want to have a discussion with him. So even if what you're saying is true, um, I don't really care that much again about one random thing he did like 10 years ago. Uh, there's a big difference between me interviewing someone, and me endorsing them. So if I was, if I was contemplating on endorsing to him or, um, like partnering with him in a business sense, then yes, I would want to know all of this. But if it's just a simple interview, um, I don't really care that much. I just want to have a discussion. And I think uh, a lot of people would enjoy, uh, that discussion. So, yeah. If you, if you don't like him, just don't fucking watch it. I don't know what you want me to uh, tell you. Coincidentally, they're models. Uh, yeah, but you said that uh, they were doing a, um, a beauty pageant. So if there was a beauty pageant that was done, then it would make sense that the girls are models. Uh, I mean, it's, it's some evidence for sure. It's kind of circumstantial evidence, though. So, yeah, I don't know. I just don't really have the mental energy nor the time to like deep dive into it because again, I'm not planning on being business partners with him. I'm not planning on like offering his course in my course. I'm just simply planning on having an interview with him. A lot of people want it. Uh, again, I want to ask him some questions myself. I just one of the OGs of the community. I think it'd be good content. I think it'd be an interesting interview. Yeah. I just don't really care about like some fucking random shit that happened 10 years ago that much. Uh, all right, cool. So we just, flew through a lot of questions hopefully you guys enjoyed this so yeah i'm not sure if we're going to be back tomorrow but we will be uh back um we'll be back on tuesday with the debate with president sunday and we will be here wednesday with uh what's it called uh the allende versus destiny debate that's going to be a lot of fun a lot of fun uh all right hopefully you guys are looking forward to that anyway appreciate y'all and have a good night peace also lied yeah Okay, you might be right, dude. I don't know. I would have to deep dive into this. Uh, but again, what I'm saying is I just don't really care that much uh, if what happened 10 years ago with him or not. I just want to do a, uh, like, have a discussion with him. But you might be right. You might be wrong. I don't know. I'd have to, like, really deep dive into it. I'll go through the evidence. That would take me hours. And that's hours I would rather spend, like, actually working on myself rather than, like, just deep diving into someone who I'm just planning on doing one podcast with. So, yeah.